Zillman, quick hands, Torpy's over, gets it down. Mullen, short ball, they hit back straight away. Gidley, Prince, Gidley wins, Bird to Campbell, and they're back the Titans. Prince, short ball, Minichello, and the Gold Coast have leveled it up. I think that's a try, and Newcastle's back in front. Cooper Luna has over in the corner, and Newcastle extend their lead to eight. Quick play the ball to Goy's penalty. He didn't get to his feet, says the referee. Full back to beat. Here comes Gidley. That's a try. The Titans back in the game. Torpy. Has he got it down there? Yes, he has. And the Titans are back in front. Greg Bird, he's over the line, gets it down. Who are they for the corner? Campbell to beat. Newcastle have been beaten despite scoring 36 points. A lot of points on that occasion, 38 points to 36, the scoreline. Will there be a lot of points here tonight at Hunter Stadium? Uh, who knows, but the one thing we do know, the wind will be a major factor here tonight. The conditions quite brisk, quite cool, and the wind really kicking up, uh, which will run left to right uh, of your screen, or right to left, left of your screen tonight, uh, it would seem. Left to right, OK. I, I got it the third time, Lucky. Uh, but let's talk about this game tonight. Look, Darius Boyd uh, hasn't scored a try for Newcastle this year and it's fair to say he's been out of sorts. Did he play himself into form on Wednesday night? Well I don't know look he, he scored a couple of tries but he didn't have to do too much to score those tries either it was off uh, you know a very good pass from Billy Slater. Uh, it's a confidence thing obviously with Darius Boyd. Uh, his game has deserted him in the early part of the season uh, he's not back to his uh, tackle breaking self. Uh, he's not setting up tries for his outside men. He's got a, a fair bit to work with too with uh, Junior Sow and Uate on the right side you've got Tamana Tahu and McMahon Manus on the left, so he's got a lot to work with, but he just needs to get back to breaking tackles, bringing the ball back and getting the Newcastle set off to a good start. Well, a big factor for the Newcastle Knights tonight is going to be Danny Badiris. He didn't play State of Origin, so he will be out to prove a point tonight, and Warren Smith spoke with him earlier. Danny, first off, a couple of weeks out, how's the Achilles? Yeah, good. Um, it's been a bit of a write-off, actually, um, May. It's, uh, you know, I've been injured and a bit of sickness, but uh, looking forward to getting back out in the field tonight with the boys. Looking uh, at the side from the coach's box as opposed to being out there, what were your impressions? Uh, yeah, we've just lacked a few things uh, for the last three weeks. Uh, obviously, that's led to losses and... Um, you know, at times of the season we haven't been far off, but uh, we've probably gone downhill for the last month and um, you know, we need to turn that around pretty quick. Completing sets is a, an ongoing issue, I guess. Uh, Wayne Bennett's spoken about that this week. Yeah, just giving our uh, ball players a chance to get down to the opposition uh, good ball zone and, and have a couple of shots and bring our good players in like Darius and, and all that sort of guys and give them some quality ball. What about Willie Mason? Uh, he's been a good pickup. Of course, Willie's been great uh, vocally. You know, you're always going to what Willie's going to bring to the games. Um, you know, a lot of talk, which is great. But his enthusiasm for for training has been you know key for us. And uh, you know, a lot of the boys are feeding off it and uh, picking up a lot of things. Thanks for your time. Thanks for the stuff. Brett Kamali with Danny Badiris. Can you place equal weight on ability and also leadership? The leadership there with Danny Badiris. He'll bring some experience. He'll bring that talk around the ruck. I just question how much impact he's going to have in the game. Obviously, having an Achilles injury, he's not going to be doing much running for the last three, last three weeks. So let's see how much spark Danny brings to the game. But certainly that experience and that composure when they get on their trial on to build some structure. Our Bundy top shelf tips. Brett Kamali, which way are you going in this one? I'm going the Gold Coast Titans. I think they've been playing good the last three weeks and look for that to continue tonight. A bit of an upset, and for Warren Smith as well. You're sticking with the locals. I I'm going with the locals. Uh, I found it a really tough one to pick, but because uh, if you had to go on last start form, you'd go the Gold Coast Titans. But Danny Badir is coming back into the lineup, swings at Newcastle's way. TAB Sports Vet, and we'll also check in with the first try scorers. And no surprise to see that the Newcastle Knights are the favourites for the first try scorers with Aquila Uate, a try scoring machine, the favoured way there at $7. Stay with us here at Hunter Stadium. On the other side of this, the Newcastle Knights taking on the Gold Coast Titans with your commentary team of Warren. Smith, Greg Alexander and Brett Kamali. Stay with us on your sports leader Fox Sports on Bundaberg Super Saturday. Here at Hunter Stadium, it's the first of two games tonight on Super Saturday. It's a chilly one here in Newcastle and the locals coming to see their side hopefully find some form after struggling through the opening 10 games of their 2012 season. Just two wins from five games so far here at home this year. 
The Titans, their form on the road isn't too bad. They've won three of five. In fact, all three of their victories in 2012 coming on the road so far this year. After Robbie Farah's outstanding origin return, Ricky Stewart's first choice Blues hooker is making his comeback from injury tonight. Danny Badiris is leading the Knights against the Titans at Newcastle. Blues winger Aku Uate showing the way early. Gives Uate a chance to reach across the top of Gordon. He plants it down. The Titans struck back with two tries in two minutes, stunning the Knights at halftime at 16-4 to the Gold Coast. It's an interesting scenario for the Newcastle Knights, isn't it, Noddy? Wayne Bennett and his side taking on his old side, the Brisbane Broncos, who they have lost their last three. So it's uh, desperate times for both teams. That's right. There's a lot of desperation in a lot of football clubs currently at the moment in this competition. Newcastle need to turn this around. Wayne Bennett will have to fall under some pressure very, very soon. Tinkler Town's come, bought the place, it's all expected to be the Premiership favourites and it hasn't turned out that way. I would expect Brisbane next week to bounce back. They were very unlucky against Melbourne Storm. Origin players back, look for Brisbane to bounce, make it very hard for Newcastle next weekend. Some uh, despondent faces there it would seem well, in that dressing room. Searching. Mm. There's some soul searching going on there because that was their worst effort of the year. Uh, the commitment in defence just wasn't there and if it, if it was, you know, they could have pushed the Gold Coast Titans tonight. Consecutive wins for the first time this year for the Gold Coast Titans and a good victory, 24-14, over 15,000 fans up there at Hunter Stadium and they left very disappointed. In fact, after the game, in his post-match press conference, Wayne Bennett used the word embarrassing and he said that the problem as a coach is that normally the players pick themselves. Well, now he's starting to pick the team, and that's not a, a, a good sign. Gold Coast, uh, really good, and, and they've been really competitive in the last four yeah. or five weeks. You know, probably haven't got the results they deserve, but they did last night. But, Joey, Newcastle, um, but they'll be sick of the word expectation, but it was huge up there early on. Yeah. Kurt Gidley, the loss of him, absolutely crucial to them, no doubt. But what about Newcastle? Do they need... I, I know that in the past you've mm. spoken about Darius Boyd at... at possibly playing in the halves at some stage. Do you think that might be an option for them? Uh, well, they're playing Brisbane this weekend up, up there. They have to... Darius needs to be stimulated somehow. He, he's a player who needs someone to provi provide for him. And that's not happening at the moment. Um, they, uh, they need to shift him to 5'8". And they need to put Jared Mullen to halfback. Tyrone Roberts, he needs a, to go back to lower grades and work on his game and be given a rest. Uh, I'd be doing that. But at the moment, the, the Knights lack... in. Enthusiasm, commitment, they, they were really poor last night. Their, their defence, the, there was, they just weren't even coming off their line. It was really... I felt for the supporters mm. who turned up to watch them. Well, I, I got a text saying, from someone up there said it, it was... You could hear a pin drop. Like, yeah. it was quiet. And, but I guess the one bloke who is providing that enthusiasm you're talking about, and we discussed what influence he would have had three or four weeks ago, Willie Mason. It was good. Uh, his last 20, especially last yeah. night. And Look at this, though. Where's the support? Like, you, you've got to be supporting your big men, especially someone like Willie. Um, there's no one around the ball. I'll tell you what happens, too. If you stop supporting, they'll stop running home. It's the one thing I notice. You know, when you stop supporting the blokes who are going forward for you, they'll stop running hard. And Willie's been really good the last couple of weeks. Um, in defence, he's getting off the line. I don't know how many minutes he's playing at the moment, but... And Willie um, can hold his head high. James McManus can hold well, his Keith head high. Well, Keith Snow was all right. At the start of the game, he sort of got him rolling forward and a little Chris bit. Chris Houston, he's doing his job. Mm. The rest, you pick your games up. Right. Tough the times, the two at the Knights. They went down to the Titans, 24 to 14. Coach Wayne Bennett warning fans they're in for a bumpy ride. And I'm embarrassed, I'm embarrassed with the way we're playing, but if we could just wave a magic wand and get a ride, well, we'd do that, but it's not going to happen. It's the night's seventh loss of the season, and they've got the Broncos next week. Victoria Murphy, 10 News. While a frustrated Wayne Bennett admits his master coach magic is taking longer than expected to work at the Knights after their seventh loss of the season against the Titans. And I'm embarrassed, I'm embarrassed with the way we're playing. Ros Kelly, Nine News. The Storm now has a six point break at the top of the table. The Tigers move to seventh. The Bulldogs and Roosters will complete round 12 tomorrow. While in Newcastle, Greg Bird and the Titans embarrass the Knights, and their coach admits for once he doesn't have the answers. I'm embarrassed, I'm embarrassed with the way we're playing, but if we could just wave a magic wand and get it right, well, we'd do that, but it's not going to happen. 
for Patrick Brisbane. Patrick Mollahan, 7 News. And lastly, Maddie, the Newcastle Knights have handed a lifeline to Broncos outcast Dane Gagai, signing the promising back effective immediately till the end of 2014. Great news there for the young speedster. It sure is, Lara. That's great news up there at Newcastle. Can do it. I think Gago will fit right down there at, uh, up at uh, Newcastle. So well done him to play with a lot of ability. Let's talk about the Newcastle Knights now, Benny. You're really, really struggling at the moment. Can I ask you, it's, I must say with Wayne, it's the first time when I read Wayne's comments after a game that I've ever heard him say Labourly side embarrassing or that he felt embarrassed by him. He made the comment that the most difficult part of his week is having to pick a team because he feels like players aren't putting their hands up. Give us a bit of an insight. Well, I think what he's struggling with most of all at the moment was, first and foremost, that there wasn't any real strong leaders at, at the Knights. I mean, that was in part why he got Willie Mason back to the club. Love him or hate him, Willie Mason's a character and he's a leader and he makes the, the training environment an a, a enjoyable one. And uh, once he's out there in the field, he's in the contest, he leads from the front. Um, the Knights on the weekend against the Titans they punched out 15 minutes of good football. And mm. the moment Will Zillman made that break, it was like they'd forgotten that they were in a contest. And that, w that was what disappointed him most. That come the end of that game, he, he'll get cranky at you for poor execution. But if it's, if it's a, your result's about poor effort, he just won't yeah. cop that willy yeah. body. No. Wayne Bennett coaches you on effort. I mean, he lets you, like, obviously he buys you as a footy player because he likes the way you play. Mm. So he lets you go out there and play to your natural ability with a little bit of structure, but he coaches you on effort, and their effort's been poor. Mm. And that's what would be doing his head in because I don't think he's coached the side with an effort with that. You know, I mean, it's just a poor effort. I, and get, I and can't get that. It's like pride in your performance. And I think probably one of the things from the outside looking in that he's struggling with is to why that effort isn't there. I can't, you know, I think I, they look a bit disinterested. I don't think anyone bit, can work out exactly what's going on. Particularly what happened it's, at the it's Dragons. It's bizarre. Yeah, it's exactly. like he turned up and they just fired just, up straight away. I mean, we just expected him to come in on a magic carpet. And like a lot of people, oh, I spoke to people up in Newcastle leading in and said, right, oh, Wayne's there for four years. And they'd say to me, how many comps are we going to win? I said, mate, one would be nice. And they'd laugh. There was that unreal expectation which makes it extremely difficult. And, and when I speak about leadership, it, it's not a question of the, the type of people that he's got there. It's mm. that I don't think he's come across a more pli a polite and quiet bunch of yeah. guys, yeah. you know. You need Danny some Madeiras, in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly right. The John's yeah. boys. <laughs> we got, probably got about two or three good games left, did we? Now, uh, don't double look, it, mate. They made, he <laughs> they made headlines last year, the Knights, but uh, some bad headlines today. Knights by big trouble. And uh, Phil Rothfield in the, the Daily Telegraph's really... And, and boys, uh, I know players say they don't read the papers, but that just builds a little bit of pressure, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, but, I mean, that's not a hard article to write. I mean, anybody yeah. can see which players are struggling at the Knights right now. Mm. The one thing I've learnt to do about the, the good coaches in this game, you know, I mentioned Tim Sheens earlier, having no doubt about the Tigers. Well, Wayne Bennett, he's into building football clubs. That's just yeah. what he does. So right yeah. now, you've got to back his record, don't you? Of course. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He, mate, I tell you what, you want, <laughs> you want to get the mix right, how much sand, how much concrete. <laughs> i tell you what. Because at the moment, look, I don't see, like, honestly, I don't see a way out this year. Mm. But he needs some help and he needs those senior guys to really buy into it. And then mm. I reckon he's happy that that's been written. Yeah. Like, I reckon he's sitting back and I reckon that he's happy. Well, for Wayne Bennett, the challenge is that the club are in the bottom half of the ladder and uh, right down in confidence, to say the least. Here's what he had to say after the loss to the Titans. Well, the bad news is I've been here before. So I know what, I, what I'm, what's in front of me. I know how to handle what I've, what I've got at the moment. And it, um, yeah, my coaching career has been long. A lot of people forget where I came from. So um, they look at the, at the results, but there's been a lot of, you know, indifferent stuff over a long period of time. So, but at the end of the day, I always get where I want to go and I won't, won't be any different here. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah, he looks pretty relaxed, Benny. What's he been hanging out with Joey or what? <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know. But look, I mean, he's 100% right what he says. People have celebrated his six grand finals. Yeah. But in between those grand finals, seven grand finals, I should Tough say. Times. But in, in between then, he's yeah. had some teams that have performed ordinary. And, and those have been the years that have tested him that are going to help him right now at Newcastle. <laughs>
Yeah, good on your block. Uh, welcome to Contrary Conduct, everybody, and a uh, big welcome to uh, Paul Cameron from the Daily Co Telegraph. Keddy, how okay. are you? I'm good. I feel like I'm on the set of Coneheads here. So. It's unbelievable, <laughs> isn't it, mate? Yeah. <laughs> the club. Boys, let's jump straight into this. We've got a lot to get through. Uh, firstly, dudes, I want to go to you. Newcastle Knights, boys. That's what we're going to talk about. Boy, yeah. oh boy, how bad are they going? Mate, they've been disappointing, but uh, I think their action's been a little bit overplayed. They never, hang, hang on. They hang, never hang deserve on. to be favourites for the competition this year. Hang on, you're they wearing your Newcastle hat now. No, no, no. They've been, I said they've been disappointing. And, and look, I'm not going to deny that, right? Wayne Bennett went there with a plan, a four-year deal. They're in a rebuilding phase. They never asked to be tipped as premiership favourites. They never should have been, given the roster they had. No one asked to be, though. Hold dudes. on, no rebuilding. One. They finished eight last year. They bought Danny Badiris, Cade Snowden, Darius Thanks. Boyd, Tamana Tahu, Cuthbertson, you thought that those guys finishing eighth, that they probably would have, like we all thought, maybe sixth, fourth, yeah, but, third. Yeah, but not let's just have a quick look at them in the last couple of weeks, right? If no, let's talk about, no, I'm just saying they finished eighth. Expectation. We all thought they'd probably be in the yeah, I thought yeah, they'd yeah, top okay. four. And yeah. let me just say, who's been out for them? Dan Bidiris came back last week. Who else has been out for them? Kirk Gidley. Kirk Gidley. They're their two major ball handlers in yeah. the side. You take the two major ball handlers out of any side, they are going to struggle. Unfortunately, rugby league I has become Darren such Rocky a game. Not playing for the Broncos anymore. Mm. What's well, so that got to do? You, you take Cooper Cronk <laughs> and Cameron Smith out of Melbourne. How are they going to go? Yeah, Tell me. That Give me an Rocky was in the Broncos last year. Everybody thought they were going to struggle. Yeah, they, they but they've brought, they've brought, they've a, they've brought a quality player in they've his place. A of, He's a quality North. player, though. Well, let's have a listen, boys. Firstly, and we'll continue after this. This is what. Sir Andrew Johns, Knights' greatest ever player, had to say about the Knights on Triple M. I watched the game from, from Hunter Stadium. They should get their money back. It was disgraceful, the game. They lacked enthusiasm. They lacked commitment. Um, they, they were inept. They've just got no confidence. And their attack is so boring. And their, their big-name players just aren't performing. They're, they're going dreadful. That's but, a big statement, Joey. Lacking commitment. I'll say it again, they lack commitment, they lack enthusiasm, they were hopeless. Their defence, their speed of the line and coming off the line, it just wasn't there. I, 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 well, that's pretty hard work. Like that. I, think, I, think, mate, he I think when Peter say. Sterling talks about his club, if Alan Langer spoke about the Broncos or Wally Laws, if Andrew John speaks about Newcastle, you know, if those guys talk about their clubs they the right, that they, they love, the right. I think they've got a right. If, if, 100%. If Brandy Alexander talks about Penneth or like Roy Simmons, or the, they've got a right. Those guys mm. have really made their club. If Cliffy Lyons or Jeff Toovey come out and talk about Manly, those guys have a right. And for an ex-player to come out there, I just heard disappointment in his voice. I think he, yeah. he was a bit embarrassed at Without a shadow, you know, where yeah. that club was last year and where it should well, be that they're not playing. Now, the Broncos and <laughs> the Knights yeah, up there at Suncorp Stadium. The Knights, $5. Speaking of gambling, uh, TAB Ooh. Sports Bet, is that? I'm just, geez, I like the Knights at five bucks. <laughs> yeah. No, look, look I'm, I'm, a New, I'm a Newcastle boy. I'd love to see. You know, when Wayne Bennett returned to uh, Brisbane mm. with St George Illawarra the first time, mm. pulling yep. an upset win. But at the moment, I, I do like, really like the Broncos. They're still my tip. Surprising, even though they lost last week for the title. I think they can win the comp. And look, or, unless it's a drastic turnaround, it'll be the Broncos, you'd think. Time for sport now with Tony Squires and the whistleblowers are getting some support. And from a coach, Chris, here Des Hasler's defensive referees next. And meet the red-faced Knights, all for a good cause. Red noses only at the Knights as Wayne Bennett and his boys did their bit for SIDS. Patrick Mullahan, 7 News. Still ahead tonight, a special feature with Tigers legend Wayne Junior Pearce. And coming up next, our front row forum. Joining us for that is Newcastle skipper Danny Badiris. We'll see you soon for that. went backwards tonight, that's the part that disappoints me. Whoever seems to get the opportunity, I mean, no one's grabbing it. And I'm embarrassed, I'm embarrassed with the way we're playing. But at the end of the day, I always get where I want to go and I won't, won't be any different here. Yes, that was Wayne Bennett speaking after the Knights lost their fourth home game this season against the Titans. Time now for our front row forum and joining us as always is the Daily Telegraph's Dean Ritchie. Hello, Bulldog. Hey, Andrew. And joining us tonight, Newcastle's magnificent captain, Danny Baderas. Thanks for joining us, Danny. Andrew, thanks, mate. Danny, can I start off by asking you what you thought when you heard Wayne Bennett's comments saying that he was embarrassed by your performance last weekend? Well, he's spot on. Uh, as a group, we're not where we want to be. Um, if you're throwing out a report card, you'd probably say, you know, around C-minus. And, um, you know, around the halfway mark now, and 
uh, at times it's just not acceptable for another team just to roll into our town and into our um, stadium and sort of roll through us like they've been doing. And uh, like you say, we've lost four at home. And for our fans to um, be putting up with that, and we've got a lot of members, we've got a lot of season ticket holders there, and it's very disappointing. And, you know, Wayne pretty much said it. Denny, I guess everyone has to shoulder some form of uh, responsibility for your uh, team's performance this year. But Wayne Bennett, the super coach, is he finally, after all these years, under the pump? And if so, how's he handling it? Well, Wayne's signed for four years. He's got to get this team and this club um, the way he wants it. He's got to develop a culture that he wants, and he's well on the way to doing that. Um, you know, Wayne's he, he couldn't have done any more for us. Um, it's up to us to... Um, to, uh, mate, there's no excuses. It's up to us as players. The players are the only ones that are going to get us out of this slump. We're working hard. Uh, the penny will drop soon. Um, I'm sure we'll go on a bit of a roll. But uh, like I said, there's, she's on this week. Um, we're halfway and um, she's on for a, lo a lot more month, uh, another couple of months. So um, I'm sure we'll be okay. Danny, I, I realise you weren't there last year, but Rick Stone's on a quarter of Wayne Bennett's wage. He had a lesser roster, yet he still managed to get the Knights to the uh, semi finals last year. Yeah, I, I guess with expectation, which it has been a lot around this year, and you know, from some circles at the start of the, of the pre-season to put us favourites was just outrageous. And um, you know, with expectation, there comes some pressure, and um, you know, we haven't lived up to the bill. So um, you know, we've got a new half. We've got Tyron Roberts there. We've got you know, Mullo sort of. He's been there a lot of years now, and um, you know, the style that we want to play is probably um, not coming to the fore. And um, you know, we've got to pick it up in a lot of areas. Uh, Danny, your recruitment has been questioned uh, quite thoroughly, to be truthful. Uh, Darius Boyd, Cade Snowden, two names being mentioned as not justifying their pay packet. Is that unfair? Uh, I don't think we're doing enough to help those guys, support those guys. I think we've got to get Darius in the game a lot more. You know, Cade's one of these guys that um, is remodelling his game under Wayne. Uh, it'll take time, but he's got a lot of heart, Cade, and I'm, I'm sure he'll be fine. So. We've just got to inject Darbs into the game. Um, at times, I feel sorry for Darbs. He's always played in you know, some great teams. And um, you know, when you're at Newcastle, it's just a tough time. And um, you know, we'll, we'll get there. We'll work, work as a group. And um, I'm sure uh, you know, at the end of his career, or hopefully he's here for a lot more years um, with, as being a Newcastle Knight, that he'll have some good times. Danny, your club is one that, whether you follow Newcastle or not, you've always enjoyed watching play uh, because it's flamboyant, there's a lot of attack. And we did your game last Saturday on radio and there's 15,000 mm. there. I've never heard them so quiet. Your attack all year has been almost impotent. What, is there reasons you can put it down to as to why the attack hasn't clicked? Um, yeah, obviously we're playing without our captain in Kirk Gidley and, and he's been playing in the halves. He brings a lot of energy to the team. Uh, we've got Tyrone in there and, um, you know, for the rest of the season, the team's his. Um, you know, we've got to find his niche and the, the way he wants to play, but uh, we've got to show a lot more variety in attack. Um, you know, I think our emphasis has been on defence and it's kept us in the games a lot of the times. We're grinding games out uh, with our defence and um, at times our attack is, like I say, hasn't been very good at all. And, um, you know, like I said, we, we've got a lot of, lot of weeks to come now and we've just got to, um, for our fans, you know, and for ourselves as well, just to, uh, to start playing some good footy and, and open up a bit and not play so pressured and, um, and get rid of a few of those shackles. Danny, it's all about attitude. The great man wins seven premierships, all of a sudden comes to the Newcastle Knights. Do you think a few players might have just stood back and think, oh, it's, all, it's just got to happen. You don't have to do the hard work to, to make you win games of football? Do you think in the back of their mind a few of them might have done that? Yeah, I think it all comes down to a choice block. Um, you know, everything in this game's a choice and whether or not you choose to do things is, um, can be beneficial for the team or not beneficial. And at times our support play this year has just been non-existent uh, for me and that's a choice. Support your mate, uh, defending well, um, being in the collision, uh, things like that. Um, all, uh, all are down to a choice of the individual and it's hard work. And um, at times I don't think it's been there this year. Well, Danny, one of the downsides of being captain is you have to front up and you've got to uh, answer questions about the struggles this year. Good luck against Brisbane and for the rest of the season. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you much, guys. The Brisbane Broncos put 50 points on Newcastle today at Suncorp Stadium. Justin Hodges bagged a double as Brisbane ran in eight tries. The home side did most of the damage in the opening minutes. Hodges was instrumental as the Broncos raced out to a 24-point lead. Well, the Knights fought back in this one late in the first half, but Brisbane ran right after the break to snap a three-game losing streak.
And there you can see the match sealed up for the Broncos. Ken's next with Sport. Good evening. Good evening to you, Peter. After four straight losses, Wayne Bennett is in a deep hole. Whatever Wayne Bennett said before kickoff, it took a while to set in. The Knights trailed 24 0 before hitting back with three tries in eight minutes. The Guava will score! But Brisbane's leaders took on the threat. The Broncos up 50 24 with Fire Day at the front. Slam and Sammer slammed it down for a Brisbane try. Brisbane's Origin Stars have demolished Newcastle in a high scoring shootout at Suncorp Stadium. The Storm edged out the Warriors in Auckland while the Knights only turned up for half a game. Wayne Bennett pleaded for his Knights to step up, but against the Broncos, that's easier said than done. In a flash, it was 24 nil. The fans asked a fair question. They soon had an answer as Newcastle mounted an extraordinary comeback. Danny Badiris with two tries, those old legs pumping hard as the Knights made it 26 18 at the break. The comeback was short lived as the Broncos' Origin Stars lifted to a new level. The Knights obliterated in the closing 15 minutes, 50 24. And Hodges scores. At least we went for 40 minutes today. I tell you really interesting, Gordon, is players from our generation that have gone into coaching really early. And it shows, I think, it's experienced man's game. You've got Stephen Kearney, who's been on a knife's edge. Dave Ferner, who's been on a knife's edge. We had Nathan Brown from our generation who got sacked at St George Illawarra. Jason Taylor, who got sacked. Pretty Fittler, who got sacked. And there's Ivan Cleary, who, Ivan, under difficult circumstances, is doing a, doing a really good job. I don't think you can spend... You, you need to have a big apprenticeship. I think, it's, I think it's certainly the job for an experienced man. But even the experienced men are under pressure. Well, Let's talk about Wayne Bennett and well, the okay. Newcastle Knights. Well, well, I'll tell you a story about Wayne Bennett. His first, his first couple of years at the Broncos, they run a poll on Channel 10 to get him sacked. Mm. So there was a public poll to get... So if Wayne Bennett, like, and and then he, he actually went to a training session one day and said, I'm going to be sacked. The great Porky Morgan walked down and called a press conference and said he's got a job here for the rest of his life. Well, that's solid. And Wayne then. actually thought he was getting the sack, but he got, you know, like, given a lifetime contract. And that's when he was allowed to coach. If every young guy had that, had time on their side, yeah. well, they could turn into be a good And that coach. confidence. And, and, Wayne had, and Wayne had the guts, too, to make some big decisions. The Wally Lewis one and, and whatnot, which you know, could have ended with Wayne getting the sack, you know, with Wally up there, who was basically... Made, well, I he, think that's he when was it all the biggest thing to start. But, I mean, he faces some big decisions in Newcastle. Let's talk about this game yesterday. And given what happened in the lead into this game yesterday, I thought to myself, and, and this this is a big turning point, Wraith, isn't it? That, that was given away a penalty that, there when you got the ball. That was the turning point. I, Newcastle had all the momentum. They just worked themselves back into the match, and it was it was just an unnecessary penalty and, and one that didn't need to happen. And then from then on, they went down the other end of the field and you just seen th Sam Thido score a try, and all of a sudden, Brisbane were back on top. Two of those guys that went for an intercept and both missed yeah. it. Yeah. You know, but Justin Hodges, it was great to see Justin Hodges back. Um, the thing what Gaz touched on before, which was alarming, like Willie Mason has been back in our game for five weeks. Mm. He's probably their best forward. Mm. That's pretty much embarrassing for the rest of their forward pack. Yeah. They say that a guy's come back in and he's been away from the game, and full credit to Willie Mason for like training hard and yeah. coming back and being a player that we all know that he is. Mm. But those other guys should be leading away and he should be coming in and spurts. He shouldn't be leading his back it's straight away. It's unbelievable in this short period of time that he's, that he's a starting player. That he's so does that mean Willie's playing exactly. so good or they're down at this level? Probably a little bit of both. Well, Wayne Bennett uh, insists that the Knights are working towards a long-term goal. Let's have a listen to what the uh, Knights bo boss had to say after the loss yesterday. No, funny, I'm not too worried about it in that sense. I'm not, I don't like what, what's happening to us, but I know where I'm going. They know what we're doing and we're... We're driving change and we're driving culture and we'll get there. I've been coached for 26 years in the NRL and don't know what works. My, my challenge is to get them to buy into what works. You know, and the, I'll, I'll leave you on that note on this, you know, we've got a choice. I mean, I made the choice when I went there. I didn't want, you know, I don't want them to finish eighth or ninth and that every year. We're not interested in that. You know, we're driving being a top, top team and and setting up a system that'll be make them a top club for a long period of time. And that's, if we take some pain now, we'll take the pain. We'll keep taking the pain until we get it right. And you look at the Broncos, that's what they produce, and they produced it here for 25 years. You look at the Storm, 
they produce the same thing, year after year, week after week. And that's where we want to be. Mate, mate just, just on that, like, he keeps on talking about the culture. Is the culture that bad at that club? A couple of things, Gordon. I, I, like, I don't think you can talk about the club as a whole with the culture. I mean, one of the things that probably, I wouldn't say irked me, but you want to make clear is the Newcastle Knights didn't start when Nathan Tinkler took them over. No. They've had a long rich We came in the same year as you blokes and we've won two grand finals. You blokes have won six or yeah. is it six. We, we've oh, won two. Counting. Yeah, I know. You've won so many. <laughs> but, but, you blokes had a salary but at the end of the day, you know, like mate, we've had a quarter of the salary cap. We struck. Alan McMahon, who set the club up, mate, used to pick young players and say, I want two type of players. I want tough players. I want players with plenty of tomorrows. And those early players, those early years, mate, they dug in and they, they proved it, they laid the foundation for that club. That club has had a very, very, very strong culture. In the last 10 years, they've only made the finals tw uh, twice, uh, uh, only made the top four twice in the last 10 years. That's bad. But you cannot say that club, we've got to fix the culture of that club. We've got to rediscover the cu culture of that club. When Brian Smith went in, that it was under the impression that that club had a culture problem. That club does not have a culture problem. It needs to rediscover its culture. That's the most important thing. So uh, I just want, I want to clear that up because you know that, that's certainly a thing that I think a you know, bloke like Alan McMahon who set the club up in respect to him and he's no longer with us, Macca. Um, I think that had to be said. Uh, let's have a look now. A little bit later on the show, we're going to have the uh, the crunch time hit of the week. Jump onto Twitter and let us know what was the biggest hit of the round. Plenty more to come on NRL and Extra. Soul hasn't been clean. Some nice pina coladas. I wouldn't get too excited about that. Some sections of the media. Warm back the football manager. Just like your missus. How is that? No better. <laughs> You're on the strike. <laughs> Same there. <laughs> You're good. Locked on four wins each. This is a defining moment for two very proud clubs. The Bennett polish hasn't had the intended effect on a night side languishing in the wrong half of the table. While for the Raiders, a poor season sunk to new depths in their crushing defeat to the Tigers. This is two valuable points on offer and you'll see it all on the Fox Sports NRL experience. Hunter Stadium could well be last chance saloon today for the Newcastle Knights and the Canberra Raiders as we kick off Bundaberg Super Saturday. Two teams desperate to arrest a pretty poor form slump at the moment. And uh, tonight it really is crunch time for the Knights and the Canberra Raiders. Joining me in commentary tonight is Greg Alexander. Look, these two sides coming off humiliating defeats last week. They really need to turn it around sharply. Look, there's not many positives to talk about both sides. Their campaigns have been derailed over the last month and a half. Both teams only picking up one win apiece in that period. So I think both teams are that desperate. We'll get a good game here tonight. They will scratch, claw, kick their way to two points because the loser will be sitting on ten points and three wins out of the top eight which means that you, you, your charge towards the semi-finals will be a, a most difficult one if they, if they lose tonight. So I think we've got two desperate teams and two teams that will fight and they know the importance of the two points. Two teams under pressure, dare I say it, two coaches under pressure as well. And calling the action for us tonight is down on the sideline, Warren Smith. Good evening, Was. Evening, Ryan. And uh, you mentioned those coaches under pressure. Ordinarily, both Wayne Bennett and David Furner, if there were any other coaches in the NRL, I think they would be under enormous pressure coming here tonight. Well, Wayne Bennett has won seven premierships. He's in year one of a four-year deal in Newcastle. He is going nowhere. And likewise, David Furner, they have been calling for his head on a platter down there in the nation's capital. But in the last 24 hours, the Canberra Raiders chairman, John McIntyre, has come out and said, this man will be our coach until the end of the 2014 season to which he is contracted. David Furner getting the backup of the board and the chairman in the lead up to this game after spending a week in Swansea getting ready for this one against the Knights. Both teams, four wins and eight losses coming into it. There's a new signing for the Newcastle Knights. Dane Gagai in action tonight. They've made five changes to the side that was beaten, thrashed in fact, by 50-24 up there at Suncorp Stadium last Sunday afternoon. 
Peter Matty Utai will be the fullback. McManus and Naguama, the Kevin that is, not Wes. Kevin Naguama on one wing. Gagai and Tahu, the new centre combination. Mullen and Roberts, the halves. No changes in the forward pack. It is, in fact, the same forward pack that took on the Broncos last week. And that bench is Adams. Zeb Taya comes back after being dropped to New South Wales Cup last week. Adam Cuthbertson and Alex McKinnon there also on the bench for the Newcastle Knights and Wayne Bennett. Serious business for the Newcastle Knights tonight, and they have a good record against the Canberra Raiders. Well, they do. Their attack has been the problem. A fortnight ago here against the Gold Coast Titans, their, their attack was at times mind-numbing. Their defence has kept them in games up until the last fortnight, and their defence has let them down. They had 50 points scored against them by the Brisbane Broncos last week. Let's hope they put up a better effort here tonight. We don't want Wayne Bennett going to the press conference saying, I'm embarrassed. Mm. Has Willie Mason brought anything to uh, the Newcastle Knights, do you think, in his uh, few games? Games here? Absolutely. Look, they were lacking some go forward. There's no doubt about it. That's why they're on the hunt for a big man. Uh, Willie Mason, uh, well, you know, he, he does polarise opinions, but I think he's, he's done a good job here for the Newcastle Knights. He's got them going forward. Uh, uh, talking about that Gold Coast game a fortnight ago, he was the only one that made the crowd get up on their feet. Uh, if he can bring a couple of offloads to his game, that's certainly what they need. But Willie's best go is to get back 10 metres and absolutely rip into the defence. That's what the Knights want from him. And then possibly get some second phase play going after that. Adam, uh, an excitement machine and Dane Gagai uh, has his first start for the Newcastle Knights this evening. Yeah, hopefully he can bring some much needed points in the Newcastle Knights attack. He touched on it earlier, the Knights have been struggling to score points and this kid comes with a lot of raps. He's a very exciting player. He comes via Redcliffe and the Brisbane Broncos. Unfortunately for him he was let go because of disciplinary reasons. However, Wayne Bennett's a father figure to, to young Dane and he feels he can get the best out of him. So let's hope that he can because I tell you what, the Knights need someone to score some points for him and quickly. And they need a true leader. They have that in Danny Badiris. How is he going to lift uh, these troops in the sort of form slump they're in at the moment? Well, the only way Danny he knows how and that, that's to play a hundred percent you're right Ryan he's, a, he's an inspirational character I, I think his body is failing him though there's no doubt when you watch Danny run around he spent three or four weeks on the sidelines with that Achilles problem it, it's still hindering him he's not running uh, like he did four years ago when he when he left the shores and went to the English Super League I, I'm glad and I think the injury popped up at a good time I would have hated to have seen Danny Badiris try and get through a state of origin series yes one game off but Maybe a, a game, but not a, not a whole series. I don't know if his body's up to it, but I think his body's good enough to inspire these blokes out here tonight. And it's a rare challenge for Wayne Bennett as well. Well, it is a rare challenge, and, and we spoke about just you know the positions the coaches find themselves in. Wayne Bennett, I don't think he would have gone through a period like this, really, when, he, when he's had the, the Broncos for 18 years. He's had the Dragons and won a premiership with them. I, I wonder if this isn't his toughest and, and biggest test as a coach. As uh, the Newcastle Knights leading try scorer Adam McDougall, I would be surprised if you you would be going for the green machine tonight? I could never do that and uh, you know, I really hope that the Knights can win tonight and I'm very confident they can. They're very desperate and speaking to boys during the week, they're very confident they can come home with the chocolates. There are our tips. Now let's have a look at the betting odds from TAB Sportsbet here and they are the favourites, the Newcastle Knights. You would have to suggest that home ground advantage is the reason why. It really is a flip of the coin game on paper. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm going for the Knights but the Raiders, uh, they can do anything. They've got the talent there. And as we have a look at the try scorers, uh, as you mentioned, uh, perhaps uh, the Knights down that right-hand side could be the way to go. Maybe Dane Gagai on debut for the Knights could cross the stripe first. We'll find out on the other side of this when our commentary team of Warren Smith, Greg Alexander and Adam McDougall take you through what should be an absolute ripper here at Hunter Stadium. The Newcastle Knights taking on the Canberra Raiders. Stay with us on Bundaberg Super Saturday. 
Joining me now is uh, legendary Knights player Danny Badiris. Mate, can you just give us a bit of an insight on how you're feeling personally in the team at the moment? It's too hard. That, that's a hard loss to take. Um, extremely disappointing, mate. We, we turned the ball over so many times on the first tackle. Um, mate, you invite teams down there, they're just going to put points on you. And mate, no matter how good a defensive team you are, we just can't, can't give ourselves a chance playing like that. And it's uh, happening week in, week out. And, mate, boot off the field. Couldn't be much worse, actually, Deuce. You have been here longer than any other player, mate. Um, is this the worst, I, I suppose, position you feel like you've been in since you've been at the club as far as the form and the supporters booing you at this stage? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll forget what year it was, but we lost 14 in a row, mate. But I think we're giving ourselves a chance uh, to compete and win games. But, mate, the way we're playing, we're just not giving ourselves a chance. Um, now, I know we've got inexperienced guys. I know we've got new boys coming in. But, you know, when you're at this level, you just got to hold on to the ball. And uh, it's just not good enough for me. And how can you turn things around? Hey, we're working hard, we're training great. It's just not uh, going onto the field. It's, it's hard to describe, mate. Um, we're trying too hard, we know we're under pressure. Um, you know, everyone in the joint's feeling it, but uh, what do you do? You just got to keep fronting up and uh, whacking away and hopefully do what Canberra do uh, come together and, and get a good close win. Well, mate, thanks for joining me. I know it's tough and uh, you're a true legend. Thanks, thanks mate. Steve. Danny Badiris with his old teammate Adam McDougall. A tough night, as you heard Danny Badira say, some boos ringing out from the stands here in Newcastle tonight for the locals. They've lost five in a row now. We will take a break and come back to wrap it all up right after this on Super Saturday. Well, Master Coach Wayne Bennett is officially suffering his worst start to a season in 25 years. Bennett concedes he has no answers for the struggling Knights at the moment, who lost 32 to 16 to the lowly Raiders. After losing 40 to nil last week, Canberra took control of this one from early on. Willie Mason scored his first try for Newcastle, but the Raiders then finished off the battling Knights, who were booed off the field. Hey, booed off the field. Couldn't be much worse, actually, Deuce. I, I don't know whether we're going backwards or forwards right now. Not going anywhere, to be honest with you. It's the Knights' fifth straight loss and leaves them equal second last on the ladder. And Wayne Bennett says the loss of Kurt Gidley has hurt the Knights more than he thought it would. The 32-16 defeat to the Raiders, the latest hit in a season full of pain. I don't know whether we're going backwards or forwards right now. Not going anywhere, to be honest with you. Clinton Fletcher, Nine News. The Broncos sit second on the ladder. The top eight is nice and congested, nice and cosy there. Now the Warriors and Panthers will play for their points at the base of the mountains tomorrow night. The Knights were booed off by their own fans after last night's humiliating defeat to the struggling Raiders in Newcastle. Willie Mason's try put the Knights within eight at half time, but constant errors saw them slump to a fifth straight loss. A happy week in, week out, and hey, booed off the field. Couldn't be much worse, actually, Deuce. I, I don't know whether we're going backwards or forwards right now. Not going anywhere, to be honest with you. Former basketballer Edric Lee scored a double in Canberra's 32 to 16 win. Right up, boys. What about the Knights, Dukes? Joe, you, you said before, just a really disappointing performance on the weekend. Uh, I suppose it is a new low. I mean, it was a game that people looked at and said, right, they're playing the Raiders. The Raiders are really, really struggling. Coming off a 40 nil drubbing from the Tigers at home. Uh, but, boy, boy, there, there, there was just little life in them. There was, and, and, and a lot of people spoke about it uh, before the game, that this was a make-or-break game for the Knights. Uh, between both sides, they conceded 90 points. The Melbourne Storm, when you think about them, that was in one week. The Melbourne Storm had conceded only 130 points for the whole season. So that just showed how bad defence was. But if you look at this game, there was no ball control. The performances that mm. they're showing at the moment are so un -Wayne Bennett like That's the concern for me. Mm. They look very, very slow, dudes. They look slow. There is no energy in them. They're defensively bad. And now they're the second worst attacking team in the competition. There has to be some pressure starting them out up there. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. I know Wayne is this great coach and has got a massive aura about him. Yeah. But I mean, without the players, maybe you can say, this is a big challenge for him. Well, I think, well, well Dugsy, there's talk today that about uh, that, that four or five players up in Newcastle have been tapped on the shoulder and say he won't be there next year. Is that true? Is that what you've heard? Well, I'd probably go into the same magazines, Women's Day, like Naughty, to get my rumours. But, yeah. uh, you know, 
there are a lot of rumours that a lot of players aren't wanted there next year. And whilst ever there's rumours in a club, as you would know, Croc, it breeds an unhappy club. And when players aren't wanted by a club, unhappiness is cancerous. So uh, mm -hmm. hopefully their rumours aren't true. And, you know, Wayne Bennett's gone there for a long-term plan. I think we all need to be patient. And yeah. I think, you know, he's a great coach and he will turn the Knights around. But at time is uh, what he needs. Look, I, I think without a doubt, someone's, someone's going to lose their job up there. You know, that's it. You know, at the moment, it's going to be the players. Because one thing Nathan Tickler does well, as I've said before, very, very well, is make money and sack people. <laughs> he, loves, he loves doing both. Now, with the Moody Conference uh, afterwards, Wayne Bennett was asked what he could take out of the nice performance against the Raiders. Oh, not very much. There's not much to take out of them except, you know, what we all know, if you keep making unforced errors, you're going to keep yourself under a lot of pressure. And we're not defending it real well at the moment either, so it's all compounding. Last week looked like certainly um, at some points looked like a few players had turned a corner, but um, maybe another step backwards tonight, is it? Fair to say, or? <laughs> I, I don't know whether we're going backwards or forwards right now. I'm not going anywhere, to be honest with you. I don't go around counting who Shad Denu is, and I've got to assume you would be, everybody else is. Uh, whether you're a Knights fan or whether you're the coach or whatever you might be, I think everybody's feeling the pain, so I've got to assume they are. You can see the strain on Wayne there, Dukes. Yeah, it's apparently the most disappointed and disgusted he's ever been, except for the time that Ben Iken come to his door and was dating his daughter. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what happened there. She said, she said, Dad, you wouldn't believe it, I'm going out one of the players. He went, oh, Selfie Langer, is it? Selfie? Well, it's Gordon. Well, is it Webke? She said, no, it's Benny Iken. He went, oh, no. The one with the spots all over it. There you go. Yeah, she's batting the blower every day. Newcastle slumped to their fifth straight loss last weekend. Now, Joel, you're one who thought they could even win the Premiership this year. Is it now true the Knights are headed for the wooden spoon? I don't think so. Look, I tumbled in the Knights at the Wayne Bennett factor like many did, and for that same factor, I don't think they can get the spoon. It's not in his go to get a wooden spoon, Wayne Bennett. I don't think that uh, the uh, Newcastle Knights will get the wooden spoon while Parramatta's in the competition. They are <laughs> playing pretty ordinarily at the moment, and I think uh, Danny Badiris and, and, and also Wayne Bennett will fo somehow find a way out of the hole for the Newcastle Knights. A fair battle at the moment, though. <laughs> Toss of the coin, Andrew. You've got a nice smile. And you want my pick? Yeah, please. You'd feel this pain on, uh, in the same game Friday night, the Dragons up against the Dogs. And I noticed, uh, I think it was in the 13th minute, or just near on it, uh, a left foot step here from one brother to whiz past the other brother. You know, bragging rights. So I'm no sure way. you've been in a similar position. In fact, I thought that in that moment, after watching this play and knowing that Josh would be celebrating at the dinner table that same night, that I could go back through the tapes and possibly find one John's going up against another. <laughs> and there was a game... Uh, many, many moons this was, ago. This was a very tight game, actually. Yeah, it was a tight game, <laughs> and I thought, I wonder who got the bragging rights in this contest. Well, yeah. I pulled out yeah. the highlights. I'll put on a report for that. That was about the sum of your highlights. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and uh, more importantly, what I did was drill down into the statistics of both players, yeah. both John's brothers. Was that uh, a grapple tackle? The, <laughs> the final score. Chicken wing. The yeah. final score was 52-8. And you'll yeah. see here the numbers, uh, one John's versus the other. And um, quite impressive from Joey, but... Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Errors 12. Very good. You know, That's hard to do it. Like from memory, I think it was Andrew John's three Dally M points, M John's two. <laughs> that, was, that was an embarrassing night. I remember going back to Newcastle, everyone was cheering. You know, good luck, Matty. And what was even more embarrassing, they gave me a standing ovation coming off. It was almost like, thank God we let him go. So yeah, appreciate that, Gaz. Can we move on? Block, who should be the next immortal? A lot of talk about this. Andrew Johns, Melbourne Ingrid, Norm Proven. You know what? I've got a special idea for that. The two, they picked the team of the century uh, about two years ago. I reckon every one of those guys should be immortal, the best team over the last century. But if I was to pick one man, I'd have to say Andrew Johns. He's the best halfback I've ever seen and the best player along with Wally Lewis I've ever seen. Now, judging is underway for the eighth immortal in rugby league. Who should it be, Joel? It seems it's down to three. Andrew Johns, Mal Meninga or Norm Proven? OK, so Norm Proven, his record's superb, but I, I didn't see him play, so I can't make judgment there. I've got no doubt in the world that Andrew Johns will be there at some stage. Wonderful player, but chronologically, you've got to go with Mal Meninga, I think. He's just ready to go. Uh, three premierships, four kangaroo tours. I'm going with Mal. Andrew, from, from just looking at rugby league brilliance and just rugby league on the field, Andrew John should be the next immortal. OK. Yeah, and just very quickly, this week, Rugby League mm. Week, they assembled, the judges were there for uh, the immortal selection. I don't know that they've come up with the eighth immortal just yet, Fatty, but uh, Channel 9's Freddie Fittler was there.
was never supposed to go any further than just the initial four Immortals, was it? Mate, I think it was, uh, that was it. I think Ian Heads would tell you that that was going to be the end of it. But uh, look, it's great that uh, in the interim, you know, Wally and Chang and, and Big Artie have been included and another very uh, worthy person this year. The brief really was just to pick the four greatest players since World War II. So, uh, pretty simple brief, you know, and it's, uh, the, the things pretty much followed that path ever since. Of, uh, it's about pure football. People vote the way they want to, obviously, but um, it's about football. Great football. Have you got a theory on should we keep going back to the old days, sort of, you know, to the 50s and 60s, or should we start incorporating more new blokes? Do you have any sort of theory about who should be chosen? Yeah, I, the problem with the old era is that a lot, lot of us here never saw them play, so that makes it difficult. Uh, but. I you would have that. seen most of them. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not that old for it. It's a lot of things. It's observation. It's uh, conversations with a lot of former players and, and uh, former writers of the game and, and a lot of research. And, you know, the contribution and the record uh, comes into it. Um, but it's more, you know, it is the best player oh, uh, since the war. One of the original immortals. Well, I'm just happy to be one, mate. There's no, no doubt about that. Uh, a lot of competition, I've seen a lot of great players and that sort of thing and uh, all the hard work you put in the games, it's just grateful that uh, you recognise in, in this sort of way. What is it about Burnham Immortal? It's held in such high regard by everyone that follows rugby league, how is it to be one? Oh, it just feels great mate that, uh, to join guys like uh, Churchill, Chuck and uh, Gaz, you know, it's a pity Gaz can't be here but uh, it's just great to be alongside those guys. I'm looking forward to today and looking forward to the naming in September and then looking forward to the opportunities for this to become part of the game. Phil Rothfield, sports editor of the Daily Telegraph, you ran a story today. Andrew Johns is an extra mortal. Do you uh, know something we don't? I don't, Freddie. Um, I don't know what everyone else is going to vote, but you know, he wouldn't be out of place, would he? He's you know, a wonderful career and you know, a lot of people are going to judge him on his off-field issues, but you know, I've certainly never seen a better player. John's one of the greatest players of all time. I think Joey's one of those players that he changed the face of the game. A, a very, very special player and arguably one of the, the best players the game's ever produced. Who's your choice? Who are you picking? Uh, I'll be going for the best player I reckon I've seen in the last 20 years. Uh, that'd be uh, a Andrew George. I tell you what, Andrew George, you are the Messiah. Well, given this whole concept started in your reign, I'm gathering your vote would be the most powerful, so... My name was on one of those lists. You just have a good day. And uh, yeah. the best man in here. Thanks, buddy. We won't forget you. Well, good work, Freddie. And there is the cover of Rugby League Week. It's a fantastic Rugby League publication. And uh, we're also looking forward to that eighth immortal. Ron Coote, Norm Probe and Joey Johns, Mal Meninga seem to be the four that keep going around. Layla, I just want to ask you, who would you go for? Obviously, I'd like to see Freddie get it, but um, one person that I would really love to see it is Norm Proven. I mean, mm. he won ten in a row, four as a player coach, and uh, he's on the bloody trophy. Yeah, you know, that's right. he's got an award named after him. I'd love to see him be an immortal. Yeah, we'll find yeah. out. There might be two. Two might go through, and Freddie uh, and Norm. No, no, yeah, that's it. Welcome to Fox Sports coverage of Monday Night Football. Tonight, our showpiece clash pits the Newcastle Knights against the West Tigers. In last season's corresponding fixture, these sides played out a thrilling Monday night encounter in front of a bumper crowd at Leichhardt Oval. The Tigers were well below their best for the majority of the contest, but a crucial late try to Liam Fulton sent the match into extra time. Both sides traded drop goal attempts, but it would be Robbie Farrer that kicked the winner out of dummy half with just three minutes remaining. That win securing his side's position in the top eight. These sides have perfected the heart of the close finish. And tonight, there's every chance we're set for more of the same. Stand by for your Monday night NRL experience, live in HD on Fox Sports. A big welcome back to Robbie Farah. At the start of the season, Newcastle and West Tigers were considered heavyweights of the competition. The Tigers may be boxing clever over the past two months, but the Knights are on the ropes and breathing heavy. Can they respond on Monday Night Football and turn their season around? It is a season-shaping battle on your sports leader, Fox Sports, and it is great to have your company in Women in League Round. G'day, everyone. Welcome along to Fox Sports coverage live from Hunter Stadium in Newcastle for the Newcastle 
Newcastle Knights taking on West Tigers. I'm Ryan Phelan and joining me is Laurie Daly, one of Newcastle's favourite sons in Kurt Gidley. Good to have you with us boys, in particular you Kurt, but I'm sure you'd much rather be out there tonight. What's the latest on the shoulder injury? Um, yeah, just just got it out of the sling last week. Seen the specialist after after five weeks in the sling, so um, pretty much just start all my rehab now. But um, yeah, would much rather be out there. It must make for some painful viewing at the moment what you're seeing with the boys out there on the field. Yeah, I mean it has been a tough month, no doubt. Um, I think the the way we started the year, we started to build a um, you know a pretty strong defensive defensive um, record, which was great. Um, but I think over the past month, that's been the disappointing thing. We've let in. Uh, way too many points um, and it's been a, yeah, a disappointing month but hopefully the boys can turn around tonight. Well as we have a look at the last eight it's been a, a pretty disappointing run for the Newcastle Knights. No surprise it coincides with Kurt Gidley getting injured in round eight which was their last win Laurie. Yeah he's a big part of their game obviously Kurt he was their number one tacking, uh, tacking player. You know their season started off okay they were four and four after eight rounds but it's starting to to fall away from them at the moment their inability to score points um, you know, they're the second worst completion rate in the competition at 67%. They're making more errors than any other team in the competition. They cannot sustain pressure down the other end. Uh, they're not even averaging one line dropout per game. And there's a real lack of imagination when they're carrying the football. So they've got a lot of things to work on and the fact that they do concede a lot of points. So they've gone away, they've had a break. After the bye, they need to draw a line in the sand and come back with a better attitude. It's all about building respect, not only within the playing group, but also within the community kids. Well, mate, I know the past month, um, our own errors, our own unforced errors has been really killing us. Um, you know, especially in yardage, just turning the ball over and having to defend your line, it takes way too much petrol out of you to, um, to complete the rest of the game. Well, at the start of the season, it was meant to be the perfect marriage between mining magnate and master coach. We went round to some of the fans here tonight to find out whether that's gelling and what is just going wrong with the Newcastle Knights. What needs to change for the Knights to start winning? Uh, a bit more uh, passion, mate, I think. Play for the jumper. To get fire in their bellies and go for it. I don't think the situation that they're in at present with players being told they're not one of next year's helping because I think it, it flows on to the other players and I think they all get that same idea in their head. Uh, just basically confidence for a whole team. Performance, not just individuals. Because, yeah, they're just performing as individuals. I think we need to get a coach who knows how to coach new, new teams. A coach who knows how to coach experienced players is easy. I could do that. They've got to play a bit more expansive football because it's not working trying to go forward. They need to, I think they need to man up. Like, I, I'm a great supporter for them, but I think they just got to, you know, get a bit more heart and just keep playing, keep trying harder and they'll get, they'll get a good win. Some varying theories, Kurt Gidley, and, and some that must hurt to hear, but what's yours? Well, I mean, they're all, they're all pretty valid points, I guess, but um, yeah, they're passionate fans. They want to see their team doing well, that's for sure. And, and I'm certainly one that um, I'm on the sidelines now. I want to see my team, team doing well and doing things right. So, um, you know, certainly there's, there's passion within the group. I know there's passion within the group and um, confidence. One fellow said about confidence is a little bit down, and, and, and it is. And when your confidence is a little bit down, you're not confident maybe passing the ball or... Um, things that you would try if you are, if you are confident, you, you're not doing. All right, let's find out what we're dealing with as far as the teams are concerned tonight. It is a chilly Newcastle. Let's hope our good friend Andy Raymond is keeping warm. G'day, Andy. I might start a little warm-up routine of my own here. The final game of round 16. Ten more Premiership rounds to go, but is the top eight sorted already? Tonight's game will have a huge bearing on that. Currently, this side, the Tigers, are in eighth spot on the ladder. A win for the Tigers tonight means once again a four-point gap between eighth and ninth on the ladder. And that's not taking into consideration the substantial points difference on for and against between those sides. However, should the Tigers lose tonight, it's a real second chance for the Warriors, the Dragons, the Titans, the Roosters, the Raiders and Newcastle themselves. Let's take a look at the way the two sides will take the field here on Monday Night Football. 
and we'll start with the home side and they are 1 through 13 as named on Tuesday. Darius Boyd is at the back with Big Manus, Gay Guide, Tahu and Uate, the three-quarter line, Mullen and Roberts of the halves, the pack, Snowden, Baderis, Willie Mason who has been outstanding in his six games for this footy club, Houston, Edwards and Costigan. The one change comes on the bench, Chris Adams is out in 14, his place taken by Zane Tedovano in 18. The coach of course is Wayne Bennett. Looking at the West Tigers and no changes, 1 through 17. Molson is at the back with Utah, Ryan Lawrence and Takiri Ashford and Marshall once again paired at 6 and 7 with Woods. Robbie Farrer returning, Keith Galloway, Blair Bell and Hyington. Yosefa, Murdoch, Masilla ready and Big Ray Kashmir. That is the bench. The coaches, Tim Sheens. Earlier I caught up with Newcastle skipper Danny Baderis. Danny, the bye last weekend, the opportunity to rest, relax or work harder? Yeah, we had eight days off and, um, you know, if anything's to go by, the boys bounce into training. Um, as you expect, it, uh, the 80 minutes that we produced out here last time wasn't acceptable. Um, so I was eight days of living with um, you know, some bad memories. So we had to put out our, our heads pretty quick and get ready for the Tigers. It hurt professionally, but it hurt personally a lot of you guys. Yeah, I think so. I, you know. They're a pretty respectful crowd here uh, at Newcastle and they understand the game and if you don't put in effort they'll, they'll boo you and um, that's what we got. So um, you know, we're looking to restore a bit of faith in that, that part of the game and um, you know, it's up to us uh, for 80 minutes. We've, we've trained well so it's, uh, it's just got to go out on the field. What needs to change tonight performance wise? The little things, you know, little things are getting dirty, getting the kick chase right, getting, uh, getting some uh, better ruck speed, little things like that, that you know, probably aren't going to be highlighted by you guys but um, as a team we've got to be better at it. I'll highlight them for you champ, good luck. <laughs> Thanks Andy. For two very different reasons, this is two emotional and desperate footy sides here tonight. It's normally a combination that produces an exciting 80 minutes. I can't wait. Kick off is an hour as we go back to a couple of gentlemen that are really challenging the theory of pretty in pink. <laughs> yes, Andy. Real men do wear pink. We're uh, proving that here tonight. Looking forward to the battle of the master coaches and uh, we've got the two master commentators broadcasting this one for us this evening. A very good evening to Warren Smith and Greg. Alexander. Thank you, Ryan. Interesting to hear Danny Badiris there talking about the Newcastle Knights having an eight-day break off the back of that effort against the Canberra Raiders because against the Canberra Raiders a couple of weeks ago, Benny, they really had hit rock bottom. Well, it's been an ordinary month and a bit, no, there's no doubt. They've lost five straight and uh, I think their effort was questioned in that game against the Raiders. Uh, their defence has been the mainstay of the, the, the side so far this year and it did keep them in some matches early in the season, but that has deserted them as well. I think they, I, I don't care how many days they've had off and their enthusiasm, I think they need to change how they're playing football because if they don't start to take, take some risk with the ball and get themselves across the trial, it doesn't matter how good your defence is, uh, it will be put under pressure and that's shown over the last month a bit where that hasn't been able to handle it. Least offloads, least line breaks, least tackle bus. They've got to find a way across the line, otherwise they get beaten by a big margin here tonight against the Tigers. Yeah, you speak about taking risks, maybe that applies foremost to Darius Boyd, their fullback, their key off-season signing coming into 2012. Hasn't been the same player over the last couple of seasons, he certainly was in 2010. Playing tonight, obviously, with Origin 3 in the back of his mind. You'd like to think he can put that out of his mind, but it, it, it's a tough situation for both him and Robbie Farrow, the two players uh, involved in Origin 3. He's starting to warm to his task, Darius Boyd. I, I think what you've seen over the last couple of, uh, well, over the last month at least, he's starting to get a little bit of confidence back. There's been some tries, some, some tackle busts, and, and he wasn't doing that in the first six or seven rounds. So uh, they need a, a huge game from Darius Boyd. Let's hope he's not affected by Origin 3. You're one man who certainly will have Origin 3 at the back of his mind is Aquila Uwate and we'll have it there because he'll be out to prove the New South Wales coach and selectors that they've got it wrong as far as his axing from the team is concerned for Game 3. He'll be fired up tonight. You'd think so. Look, it can't be easy coming uh, coming off, uh, having to play the, the, the day after you, you're told that you'd, you're not wanted by New South Wales. I wasn't surprised even though he had a couple of uh, errors in defence and he didn't catch that bomb. I think the thing that, uh, that Aquila is struggling with and we'll see if he can make any difference here tonight is his tackle bus. I spoke about Darius Boyd, he's starting to break some tackles. Well, Aquila isn't, and that's what he's in the team for. And I think if you're looking for a reason, Aquila's lost about six or seven kilos. Mm -hmm. I think they've they've run them ragged over the off-season up here. He's looking more like an 800-metre runner than the powerhouse that broke into rep football last year. So the backside and the top of the legs has gone. And that's where he gets his edge. And, and he's not breaking tackles. He's running hard, but just ha hasn't got that weight 
uh, helping him get through the, the tackle. So we'll see what Aquila can do tonight. But off the back of uh, being dropped, I'm, I'm sure he'll be up for a big one. You'd imagine so. The one man they have been able to bank on so far in 2012 was somebody who wasn't even here at the beginning of the season. And I speak of Willie Mason, who has been pretty much their best forward since signing with the club. He's played six games now. He's averaging only 38 minutes per game, but he's also averaging more than 100 metres per game. Well, he has been the star performer in a, in a forward where there's in a pack where there's not many players going over 100 metres. Willie Mason is certainly doing that. Uh, he is uh, getting their, their sets off to good start. His involvement has been uh, very good in the 40 minutes that he has been playing. Uh, was I think we need to see a little bit more, but now from Willie Mason, we need to see some second phase play. We, we, we spoke about just then how the Knights are struggling to get across the try line. They need to take more risks, and Willie Mason certainly has got a pass in his game. So uh, I think they'd be looking from that uh, for Will, from Willie Mason tonight, a, a couple of offloads as he drags in those three or four defenders. We'll see if he can be the spark plug for the Newcastle Knights. We'll come back in a moment, boys, and talk about the West Tigers. And the big question with Newcastle Knights is creativity with points. Obviously, a lot of that centres around Jared Mullen tonight. Oh, most definitely. I think he's their best player in terms of ball, uh, you know, skill with the ball. But it's up to his forwards. If they can create good ruck speed and Mullen can go against the retreating defensive line, he's got all the skills in the world. That's been lacking for mine, for Newcastle. Yeah, I've always said one of Mullen's best traits is his running game. And he needs quick play the balls to get that. But he's strong, he's quick, he's got a good fend on him. Um, so one of his... One of his best goes is his running game, so hopefully he gets to be that tonight. OK, let's uh, get a tip from Andy Raymond. The Tigers are hot favourites. Andy, what are you thinking? Tigers may be hot favourites, but did you know this morning was the coldest morning in the Hunter all year? It is absolutely freezing. Here's a coffee to warm you up. There's a start, but I'm tipping the Tigers. Thank you, Andy. Is our coffee arriving at some stage? On its way, box? boys, oh, on its way. Good. I knew you'd be rock solid. Looking out for the commentators upstairs, as ever. What do you what do you make of this one? I just can't go the Newcastle Knights. No. Their form at home hasn't been fantastic. So uh, the Tigers on what they've done over the last couple of months uh, should get a win. Tigers for mine and a skim latte for you boys downstairs. I reckon you might need one down there. Indeed. Let's promote Andy Raymond to recruitment officer of uh, Fox Sports. TAB Sports bet for this one has West Tigers as favourite. But bear in mind Newcastle coming off the bye. Who knows whether they could turn their fortunes around. The punters believe that West Tigers will have a comfortable victory tonight. It would seem by those standards, however, as we have a look at the first try scoring market, maybe even look for a guy like Aquila Uate who will be stinging by not being selected in New South Wales Origin to have a blinder. Mate, I've just seen him in the sheds, and, and it's the first time I've seen him since um, obviously yesterday when he when he found out he wasn't picked, and he was full of beans in the sheds just then. I know he's in for a big game tonight. Now, we're all tipping West Tigers, obviously, you are tipping Newcastle Knights. How much of that is belief, and how much of it is optimism? Well, I believe they can win tonight. I know they've had a good week of training and, and what you do through the week is an important part, but you've got to be able to do it on the, on the field tonight. So if we can clean up a few of our errors, uh, yeah, work hard for each other and make sure we work hard in defence like we were at the start of the year, I think we're a chance. Kurt, we really appreciate you being with us tonight on the yeah, pre-game show. Uh, we're going to let you go and support your boys. They'll need that tonight against West Tigers, which is a formidable opposition. Laurie Daly and I will be back at half-time, but we are going to now take you to our commentary team of Warren Smith, Greg Allen. Alexander and Andy Raymond, boys. This is a pivotal one as far as these two teams are concerned for their season. Yeah, especially so, Ryan. You get the impression that the Newcastle Knights really have to make a stand here tonight. They're coming off the bye. They had a week off, as Danny Badir has told us, to collect their thoughts, get their heads together off the back of a dismal showing against the Canberra Raiders. They've lost five games straight after a, a fairly even start of the season in which they'd gone 4-4 four and four over the first couple of months of the season. But it's time to make a stand, especially after they were booed from the field of their last home game. Yeah, and this is our uh, line-up. Boyd at the back, McManus and Uata on the wing. Gay Guy and Tahu in the centres. Mullen and Roberts are the halves. And the forward pack of Snowden, Badiris, Mason up front. The back row, Houston, Edwards and Costigan. And the interchange bench, Taya, Cuthbertson, McKinnon and Tedavano. Last start loses the Tigers against the Roosters last Sunday afternoon in front of another full house at Leichhardt Oval. It won't be quite a full house here in Newcastle, but the Tigers don't mind coming up to the Hunter. It seems they have a pretty good record up here and they have a good record on the road in Monday night football in recent times as well. We'll wait and see if they can keep that going tonight, uh, but I think they're going to get stiffer opposition than most people think. Yeah, look, I think the Tigers are desperate to come out and win after their loss against the Roosters, so they won't get an easy mark here uh, 
against the Tigers. Uh, they are desperate to win Newcastle, mainly for these people that are on screen right now. The fans deserve a, a better showing than what they've seen up here at uh, Hunter Stadium in recent time. Yeah, they were coming out in good number at the beginning of the season, but the looks on the faces of the fans right there probably tell you a bit about the way their season has gone. We'll find out how it turns out tonight on Monday Night Football because up next, after the break, stay with us. It'll be the Knights and the Tigers. To finish the game, gets the flags in the air. The Knights won't care about that. 38 points to 20. And the teams, 9th, 10th, 11th, the Warriors, the Dragons, the Titans, throw in the Raiders and the Roosters, if you like. And now the Knights move to 14 points. They're all cheering the fact that that gap between the top eight and those chasing is still only two points at the end of round 16. The Knights have beaten the Tigers 38 to 20. And a complete reversal from their last performance here against the Canberra Raiders. They had a week to think about it. Wayne Bennett gave them time off and the things that they were poor at leading into tonight's game they got right. Completed 31 of 35 sets. They were the worst in the league. They were making the most errors of any side in the competition. The reason why no side had scored fewer tries than Newcastle. They scored six and on the back of their key men, Darius Boyd, outstanding. Tamana Tahu, absolutely brilliant, scoring a hat-trick. And Jared Mullen, right from the get-go tonight, looked at danger every time he ran the ball. That man on screen there, Darius Boyd. It's been a long time coming. He's found some form tonight in the Newcastle jumper. Let's go downstairs now to Andy Raymond. I think all of them nice colours. No, I've no, just asked no, this bloke no, no. when, when his last hat-trick was. It was 2005. What a night to get it. Yeah, it is, especially, um, you know, with the, the season, how we've been going, the losses, you know, I think it was five in a row. Uh, you know, we hit a low point at the club, but, um, you know, big big clap to the fans. Like, I think it's about 18,000 or something, I think. You know, this is, what's, this is what's good about playing in here in Newcastle. And for me, personally, coming home, is that when, you, when your back's against the wall, these, this, this, these fans, they, they support us. They're loving it here tonight. Five straight losses, down 14 points to nil. It looked like it was going to be another tough night at the office. Yeah, we talked about it during the week, you know, about, you know, if, we, if we're down on points or if we make mistakes, we don't, we don't want to talk about, oh, not, not this again, not this again. That, that was something that we, we, uh, we all talked about, and we did that. We caught our way back, and, um, you know, it's just good to get a win um, like this, especially uh, on a Monday night. 38 unanswered points. Unfortunately, you let a try in at the end. Was anything different about what you were doing with the footy tonight? I think um, probably the preparation for the last two weeks. Uh, you know, we got we got pumped here by Canberra, and um, you know Wayne made made training enjoyable. You know, we played a lot of games. Um, everyone was happy. Everyone was upbeat during the week. You know, even though we lost five games, and um, you know the club was in a, at a low point, um, we just went out there and enjoyed ourselves and. Left nothing in the dressing sheds, you know. There's, there's been a lot of talk over the last couple of weeks, but, you know, we put it into action tonight. Parramatta Eels next week. Enjoy it. <laughs> Tamana Tahu there. And the Tigers will get a chance now to regroup. They have the bye in round 17 before they come back for the Friday night fixture against the Bulldogs in round 18 at Allianz Stadium. What a clash that will be. The Tigers against the Bulldogs. At a moment, just to collect their thoughts off the back of these consecutive losses. The Knights, well, the week off helped them in no uncertain terms. They had one on one meetings between the players and the coach in the lead up to this game. They relaxed things at training. It has certainly worked tonight. And let's find out who is the Harvey Norman man of the match once again. Back downstairs to Andy. $1,000 gift card, Harvey Norman, man of the match, goes to Darius Boyd. Congratulations, take that. It's not the first one you've taken off me either. What a relief, what a win. Yeah, it's uh, very pleasing, I think, especially after that 14-0 down. Um, we haven't had the best start this year, and 
to come back from that is very pleasing and um, it's just good to score a lot of points and play a team performance. You get a smile on your face. You enjoyed that one? Yeah, it's been a while coming. Uh, it's been a bit pretty tough, but in saying that, we've been training really hard and we've got a good bunch of blokes and um, we deserve we deserve the win. We've, we've trained hard and it's good to see. You've been critical of your own form this year. To a night like tonight, a performance like tonight, it, it can be a season changer. Yeah, definitely. I think um, we've, we haven't been far in games. We've always put in good performances. It's just been 15, 20 minute lapses and, and this year and how tight the comp is, you just can't do that. And as tonight we, we started slow, but it's good to finish it off and get the win. That's against the Tigers, they're a strong side. A couple of old blokes, Willie Mason and Tamana Tahu, both excellent in their field tonight. Yeah, definitely. Mason especially, he's been great since he's come to the club. He's so much enthusiasm, so much leadership and um, all, we all know what Tamana can do. We just need to get him more ball and that's what we did tonight. Congratulations and good luck in Origin. Cheers, thanks mate. That'll be the next time we see Darius Boyd in action for Queensland against New South Wales in the deciding Game 3 Origin encounter up there at Suncorp Stadium Wednesday week. That about wraps it up here tonight. A big win by the Nova Castrians. I know one Nova Castrian will be pretty happy about that. Matthew Johns and the boys up next with NRL Extra. Boys, uh, Monday Night Football. The Knights 38 over the Tigers 20. Footy's a funny game, isn't it? Hilarious sometimes. <laughs> Darius Boyd, man of the match. Outstanding. The whole left side, wasn't it? I mean, it's it's probably relevant to Tamana Tahu scoring three tries, but you know, they every time they attacked that way, Joel Reddy unfortunately got caught out a few times, but the Knights yeah. were great. 14 nil up. The Tigers boys, seriously, I mean, at, at the time we are in the sheds going, mate, we think, mate, this could be anything. But, I mean, you look at certain things that affect the game. Ray Cashmere is in that scrum. The Tigers are on a roll. They get penalised with the scrum feed and the game just turns around. Yeah, but that's what you, look, that's how you want your big boys to react. I think he was pushing and shoving and you can't keep on pushing and shoving. And Ray and the front row tried to stamp his authority. So he got up mm. and, you know, I think, I thought the penalty could have went either way there. I thought that was a 50-50. Yeah, if that was me, you just... Repack the scrum because Snowden threw the first punch. Did you see Cade Snowden? He was going backwards, going, Yeah, come on. <laughs> come on, I'll take you. <laughs> he was being deacon. He was retreating like the French army. Uh, you, said, uh, you said before, Gaz, you mentioned uh, the left side attack, and that was the tail of the tape. The left side, the combination of the left side, Tamana Tahu and Darius Boyd, both of them, mate, it was a split hair who was man of the match, but they drove, well, they drove. Joel already crazy. All I right. think it's a great sign here too. Darius Boyd with the confidence just to bat it straight on. And Tamana Tahu, what about the pace he showed here? He's really worn him back the clock. No, he really was. He was very I think another explosive. good sign too, Matty, was Jared Mullen. I thought yeah. he was great. Uh, he stood up Keithy Galloway cold there one time uh, and showed tremendous pace. But as you said, this combination was the difference in the match. And, and, and some concerns there for the Tigers on that edge. I mean, because this shape you're looking at here, this is, a, this is a shape that every side does, this little sweeping block play. But they won't be able to come up with the answer. Well, it was interesting to hear Chris Lawrence speak after the game with Andy Raymond, and he actually said, you know, unfortunately, people tried to solve on, it on their own with the defensive decision, yeah, and it yeah. cost the team dearly. Well, a lot of those situations, Joel Reddy, he's got himself too wide from his inside player, and he's backpedalling, mm. so it, just, it was just too much room. So it gave the, the Knights too much room, and mm. you end up with no one. We just about put the line through the Knights for the year. Do you give them hope now, boys? Is there, is there hope? Can you see them come through? I mean, who they got oh, well, next they week? Play, I, I'd hate to play them next week. Who they got? They got us next week. They've, How they've long has it since you blokes won two in a row, you blokes? Oh, Two thousand nine, years, yeah. a couple of years, mate. Yeah. I tell you what, now the man who's been under pressure has been Wayne Bennett, boys. And I tell you, this is these are the Knights supporters last week uh, after the uh, the Raiders uh, loss. And uh, there's, there's Wayne's car, the mighty boy. They just turned up. Hopefully Wayne's not in there because he, he wouldn't have been able to celebrate the win tonight. But, he looked uh, like a struck match if he was in there, Benny. Mate, absolutely. I think he's got a penalty in that. Yeah, well, some of that polyester he's wear, he wears, he'd certainly go up. The unbelievable result, the Knights 38 over the Tigers 20 at Hunter Stadium. The, the Tigers unbelievable at 14 nil, and the Knights scored 38 unanswered points. Tamana Tahu was absolutely on fire. The man of the match was Darius Boyd in his best game of the season by far with Origin 3 just around the corner. Let's, uh, there's Willie Mason celebrating. He was very, very strong. And Aku Yawate, well, he was left out of the origin side. But Aku, one of his best displays. So uh, well done to him. For the Newcastle Knights, Wayne Bennett and Danny Baderas front of the media conference. We asked Wayne, did he see this performance coming? And in Bennett fashion, typically, he said, I didn't see this one coming tonight, but I also didn't see the bad ones coming in previous weeks. Um, and despite being down 14 nil early, this is what he had to say when we asked, did, was his side bad in that opening 20 minutes? Well, I don't think we started that badly. I, I just, um, I know, I know the scoreboard was 14 nil, but 
you know, we complete our first five sets and that's pretty good. That's what, what you're looking for. Um, they got a one try there. The first try they got was um, we'd kicked the ball dead in goal or, and they got a 20 metre restart pretty quickly and put us under pressure. So we'd virtually put ourselves under pressure. And then the second one, uh, again, I think it came off the back of a penalty. We kicked off on, the, on the, after the, they scored the try and came off the back of a penalty and put a ball in behind the back of us. and. Uh, we didn't respond quickly enough to clean it up, but I didn't feel we were going that bad. But you look at the scoreboard and it's not good. Wayne Bennett there. Now, he didn't really want to single out any individuals. He was delighted with the collective performance and the collective character shown by his 17 players, but somehow he managed to squeeze a rap for Darius Boyd out of him. Well, it's his three weeks in a row he's done that for us, so he's been back long before... Um, Tonight, but yeah, he was extremely good out there. We had a lot of wonderful teammates as well, and they all played as a team, and they enjoyed what they did tonight. That's what they probably haven't been doing. They got got to enjoy what they've been doing. The, the way they playing. And importantly, no injuries for the Newcastle Knights. Their next up assignment, the Parramatta Eels, and you can see every tackle and every try next Saturday night, live on Super Saturday, uh, when they travel down the highway to take on the Eels. Yeah, good on you, Andy. Have a safe drive home, pal, up there at uh, Hunter Stadium. And a uh, great win for the Knights. Wayne Bennett looked happy. Very happy. Did he? Where's Wally? What about the... Geez, he's getting skinnier. It's like he <laughs> forgot to take the coat hanger out of that suit jacket. Unbelievable. No, good on him, mate. They've been under the pump and it was a Big great time. victory tonight by really the Knights. Good. And Tamana Tahu has boosted Newcastle's bid to get away from Wooden Spoon contention. He scored a hat-trick of tries as the Knights rallied from 14-0 down to beat the West's Tigers. 38-20. The Knights are 12th on the ladder. The Tigers, 8th. Tamana Tahu cut loose last night, helping Newcastle end a five-game losing streak. Tahu, unstoppable on the angle. The Knights' defence certainly knew how to stop the Tigers, but the visitors had no answers for Tahu as a dual international grabbed his first hat-trick since 2005. So the Bulldogs close the gap to the Storm while the Tigers slip to eighth. It's all on down the other end. The Eels, now the Panthers, equal last. Time for sport now with Tony Squires. Now, what's this about unlikely love for the Blues? Chris, it comes from a legendary coach who is as maroon to the dry, as dry old bootstraps. Just wait till you hear what Wayne Bennett says about Ricky and his men. That's next. Headline news in New Zealand tonight is that Sonny Bill Williams is about to announce he's joining the Roosters. The Bondi Club is refusing to comment on reports the deal will be revealed tomorrow. And speaking of switching sides, Wayne Bennett has revealed he thinks the Blues can win the Origin Decider next week, telling Seven News, we deserve it. He's loving life in Newcastle, but don't try and tell Wayne Bennett that makes him an honorary New South Welshman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not honorary, don't go down that path at all. But the seven-time Premiership winner will admit to believing they can end the drought because he says Ricky Stewart's made sure the Blues no longer doubt themselves. Well, Ricky's taken all that away from them. You know, he's given them security, he's given them confidence. To do that, Ricky had to steal some of Queensland's secrets. It'd be crazy to, to think you've you know, won six series in a row and Queensland haven't done a lot of things right. I mean, we had lot, lots of talent too, but Mel's done a great job with them and so Ricky's been looking over the border. And Bennett's love the way old Raiders Stewart and Mal Meninga have thrown hand grenades over the border and been at each other's throats in the origin tradition of mate against mate. For the last two years there's been a bit of rivalry at, at its absolute best. The atmosphere in Sydney was unbelievable. That's what I want as a rugby league person, whether, whatever state I'm from. Queenslanders may not want to hear it, but in Wayne's world, the Blues finally get state of origin. I think there are two efforts in both games. You know, match Queensland in terms of team and effort and playing for each other. I say that with a bit of pride because I'm at the end of the day I'm a rugby league person. I want New South Wales to have what we've got and then the best team will win. Sounds like you're going to cheer with us next week. No chance, but I'm just being honest. Patrick Mollahan, 7 News. Yeah. What about this for the, for the upset of the season, though? This was unbelievable. You'd expect that after getting to a 14-0 lead, the Tigers were simply going to go on and, uh, mm. and make uh, a, a real embarrassment of the game. But, boy, didn't the Knights find form? And there's one man in particular that he picked up three tries. Yeah. Think, didn't he? It was the first uh, uh, great impression, I think, that he's had uh, uh, for the last I couple of seasons. I haven't seen Tamana, Joey, run that straight and hard for a long time. Well, he got some, <coughs> a 
talking to a couple of boys here in the week. I spoke to Danny Medeiros and he said a lot of the players just said that they just got back to thinking what they do best. And yeah. Tamana's just get the ball, use his speed and his footwork and his strength. He'd done that and he's so hard to stop. Mate, the confidence, was, the confidence that was there was absolutely unbelievable. It looked like kicked, they'd won ten, 10 in a row before They'll that kick one. from there. They'll, they'll, they'll go on a run now. Yep. Got into a bit of form. Played themselves in a bit of form. Fox Sports coverage of Rugby League in 2012 continues. And Super Saturday comes to you live from Parramatta Stadium, where the faithful are hoping the tide has turned for the Eels. This one is the winner! Tonight, the blue and gold go in search of back-to-back -back wins. But the Newcastle Knights will be no pushovers. Bennett's boys making the trip to Sydney with genuine belief after their comeback win over the Tigers. It's all action. It's Super Saturday. This is the Fox Sports NRL Experience. In 2001, Parramatta and Newcastle faced off in a classic grand final. More than a decade later, their current form may render a repeat a little ambitious, but both sides are coming off one of their gutsiest wins in quite some time. It could be a pivotal one here on Bundaberg Super Saturday. I'm Ryan Feeler. Great to have your company. Joining me is Greg Alexander. Character building performances last week from well, these they, two sides. Look, they certainly were because they both come from behind wins. Newcastle had been struggling. It had been a wretched couple of months for them. They were down 14-0 on Monday night against the Tigers. They came back, scored six tries, uh, and that's an area that has been a, a real disappointment for them, getting across the try line. Two veterans last week really turning back the hands of time in Nathan Hindmarsh and Tamana Tahu having big games. Will they have a repeat performance tonight? We'll talk about those stars a little bit later. But what about the team changes? Origin uh, duty will affect both of these sides tonight. To tell us a little bit more who will line up, a very good evening to Warren Smith on the sideline. G'day Ryan, of course we're missing a couple of big names here tonight, aren't we, with Origin 3 just around the corner, both Darius Boyd and Jaron Hayne missing, but there is still plenty of attack in both these clubs, despite their attacking woes so far in 2012. You look at the lineups and you think these two sides should be able to produce more points than they have been so far this season. I wonder what they'll offer up here tonight. Let's take a look at the two teams arriving now. The Newcastle Knights coming off a win on Monday night against the West Tigers. It broke a five-game losing streak. Boy, they needed that win so badly and Wayne Bennett at the start of the season said we will be a work in progress. I guess some progress certainly was made in the second half against the Tigers. For the Newcastle Knights, we know, know Darius Boyd. We expected that Peter Matayutai, who was selected earlier in the week, would be the fullback. But another late change made by Wayne Bennett and really no surprise given Matayutai's poor game three weeks ago against the Canberra Raiders in a similar position. Kevin Nagama will be the fullback. No change to the rest of the side. Their coach, as we know, is... Is Wayne Bennett. Kennedy and the decoy. It's a try. John Rudder. There it again. Trouble. Peter has got his second try. Newcastle are having a party. 18 nothing. Five metres out now. Kennedy's over. Ball bounces. Yes, what a memorable year it was for the Newcastle Knights back in 2001. They had what seemed to be an unassailable lead at half-time with Parramatta fighting back. Uh, interesting to see Tamana Tahu uh, playing for the Newcastle Knights back there, of course, uh, with Parramatta tonight, uh, with uh, Newcastle tonight. Turning back the clock last week as well, Brandy, he's going to be a very important player for them this evening. Look, he certainly will. We, we just spoke about Nathan Hindmarsh winding back the clock last week against the Panthers. Well, Tamana Tahu did that um, against the Tigers on Monday night where he racked up three tries. It had been, I think, five or six years since he'd scored a hat-trick. He has scored a few in his time, but he just got back to doing what he does best, and that's hitting holes and running hard. Bit of footwork still involved, and he, he's still got enough speed to, to find his way through uh, defensive lines. That, that was a, a nice little ball from Darius Boyd. I'm just wondering who will supply the balls because uh, they're a good combination there on Monday night, both Boyd and Tamana Tahu, of course, 
Uh, Darius Boyd won't be there, but Tamana Tahu will, will want a big game because he's up against a, a club that he spent time at. And I know one person that will be watching this match tonight, Adam McDougall, because Tamana Tahu is now just one try away from equaling Adam McDougall as the leading try scorer at the Newcastle Knights. And, and he really, uh, last week, seemingly is recapturing that form we knew him capable of a few years back. Yeah, but look, he scored three on Monday night, but he'd only scored one leading into that game. So he's had a, a couple of problems injury-wise this year, but he was back to his best last week. I'll certainly need it, and uh, gee, I'd, I'd love to see him score two and overtake Mad Dog. Yeah, <laughs> they need a big game tonight from Danny Badiris, and Warren Smith is about to catch up with him. Danny, the uh, victory against the Tigers, I guess it was the win you just had to have. Yeah, it was a bit better. Um, you know, it was for once we uh, we all went out there with a bit of confidence um, and did our roles and, and played them well. And uh, you know, it means sort of nothing if we don't go out there tonight and uh, back it up. So um, we're looking forward to the challenge. And um, you know, we haven't been away from home for a while, so it's good to get down here to Parramatta. You had seven runs for 68 metres last week. Was that a conscious thing to run the ball more from dummy half from yourself? Yeah, I think it comes through possession. Uh, our possession rate um, of, of pass hasn't been that good. Uh, but the other night, you know, we completed a lot of our sets, 31 from 35. And on the back of that, you get a chance to attack. So it was good to get out of uh, dummy half a few times. It must have been fun watching Tamana Tahu turn back the clock out wide. Yeah, definitely. Uh, T's, um, you know, when he focuses on being aggressive and um, a lot of power and aggression in his runs, you know, he's, he's devastating. So, you know, it's the first time he's been back here to Parramatta, so he's looking for a big night. Yes, Danny Badiris looking for a big game tonight. How confident are you for this one, Gaz? Did you flip a coin? <laughs> I'm not that confident for the Knights. I've actually tipped the Eels. I think off the back of that Golden Point victory, I think they've got a little bit of momentum. And the home crowd here, I think, will get them home. I see that you are tipping the Newcastle Knights. I'm going to stick with Newcastle. 14-0 down on Monday night against the Tigers. I was impressed with what they did. I know they'll do it tough without Boyd, but Parramatta likewise without Haynes. So I'm, uh, it is a tight one. There's no doubt about it. But I'm leaning towards the uh, Nova Castrians. TAB Sports Bet. Let's see uh, what the experts say about this one and which way is the favoured way. It is the Newcastle. Knights only slightly though over Parramatta as we have a look at the first try scorers as well with Aquila Uate we saw what sort of big game he had on Monday night he's certain to have an impact here again you would think oh no doubt look he'll be hurt the fact that he was dropped he backed up well on Monday night and uh, I've got no doubt he'll do plenty of work tonight one thing's for sure that tonight one of these teams for the first time in 2012 will go back to back. Will it be the home side, the Parramatta Eels or the visitors, the Newcastle Knights? Stay with us on Bundaberg Super Saturday. This one promises to be an absolute ripper. Newcastle winning twice in the space of five nights to improve their record to six wins and nine losses. Keep this run going as we go into the second half of the season. They've beaten the Eels 20 points to 12. Yeah, they were given an awful fright by the Eels who were coming to get them. Massive play by Aquila Uarte in the dying minutes to get a, a hand and get a touch or enough touch on Willie Tonga. They've been able to go back to back for the first time this year. Uh, very good, the Knights, to be opening of this second half. That was the period in which they scored three tries and got the job done to open up this gap. Let's go downstairs right now. Johnny Mark Gasnier, okay. an old teammate in Willie Mason. Yes, an old teammate and a character in that, Willie Mason. A breath of fresh air for the Knights. Mason, a great win tonight for the boys. Yeah, it was. You know, we started off well and then we went in a pretty, pretty bad patch there in, uh, for about 30 minutes in the second half, but we. Showed some pretty good resolve on our line. You know, they only scored one try, which was good. And then one in the second half. So, you know, the boys dug deep. It was good to get two points down here, mate. And on a personal note, how have you found the return to the NRL and, and under Wayne Bennett especially? It's fun, mate. You know, I suppose, you know, when, when you leave the game, you come back. I think you don't really appreciate the game until you go away and you leave it. Then you come back and then you appreciate everything. So every game, every training session, I'm, I'm loving it, mate. So loving Newcastle and it's good to get a win. And on that note, is there a talk of extensions, contract negotiations? How are they? How's Willie Mason placed for next year? Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm just looking at a five-year deal somewhere, you know. <laughs> no, I think, you know, it's going good in Newcastle. Hopefully I can settle something in the next day or two. Good luck, mate. You've been playing great. Thanks, guys. Good to see you. Cheers. Well, we heard from Willie Mason. Perhaps a deal in the offing in the next day or two up there in Newcastle for the 
front rower who has certainly played his part in getting Newcastle going in this second half of the season. We're going to take a break right now and come back to wrap it all up right here at Parramatta Stadium. The Knights winners here this evening. Okay, well, let's have uh, uh, a listen to what was said after the game here on, a, on, again, a disappointing night at home for the Eels. Well, Danny, is that a week that can turn a season around? Um, I don't know. Everyone's smiling a bit more. Um, we're working hard at training, and um, we just think that bye came at a good time for us two weeks ago. Everyone got away and reflected on the first half of the season, and, um, you know, I was, had some deep, deep thinking to do, and uh, we want to finish the season off on a good note and um, show that we are a team heading in the right direction. Particularly pleasing solo try to start the second half? Oh, mate, yeah, it's a team effort, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, it's always good when you can score a try out there. But um, it was a good, tough win. Uh, they, they've been playing some good games out there. And um, it has to come away with the points away from home. I thought it was a great effort. Well, last night was indicative of the effort of Parramatta, but just not really getting over the line. It was a back-to-back -back victory for the Newcastle Knights uh, at Parramatta Stadium. Their first victory there since 2007. Well, we spoke at halftime with Greg Alexander. It was either going to be Sando, it was going to be Jared Mullen that was going to take that game by the scruff of the neck. It ended up being Knights 5'8", Jared Mullen, uh, who would do that. And Mark Gaznia asked uh, if back-to-back -back wins, if anything has changed at the Newcastle camp. I think just get back to enjoying our footy. Um, it was getting a bit of a grind there and we were losing a few in a row. And just at training, having a lot more fun at training and uh, I think you can see in our games. For you personally, do you feel as though your game's gone forward under the coach, under the coaching of Wayne Bennett? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, went through a couple of rough patches there when we were losing. You know, you're always playing good there. But uh, a couple of wins now and uh, yeah, going all right. And just for the Knights fans, how's the thumb? I saw you injured it through the game. Is all OK? Yeah, it's all sweet, mate. It's a bit of strap, but all good. Cheers, Jared. Good luck next week, Thanks, mate. Thanks, guys. Thanks, mate. We know he's capable of uh, a second half performance like he, he uh, did there last night and obviously with the absence of Kurt Gidley it's so important that the guys, the senior guys like Jared Mullen and Danny Badiris really stand up for the Knights in the back end of this season. Exactly right, you know Wayne Bennett even came out and said he, he didn't realise the importance of Kurt Gidley to that Knights outfit and uh, Jared's, you know, he's instrumental to what they do and, and, and equally said for Darius Boyd as well, I know he was absent there but you know they kind of cancelled each other out in Jared Hayne not being there as well and as you say if, if they were going to have an influence on the game it was Chrissy Sandow and Jared Mullen and you know Jared Mullen I think it showed what we were talking about earlier, he showed patience, I thought he was a bit more selective in what he did instead of trying to push the pass or the kick and, and it paid off for him. Newcastle will be without prop Cade Snowden for a month after he sustained a knee injury in their 20-12 win over the Eels at Parramatta last night. They got the scoreboard moving with some hot potato footy to open their account. Then Jared Mullen took on the line to break the deadlock after the break. We would have won that game a month ago. Um, we would have lost it just after half time there when the pressure was really on. New Eels coaching director Chris Anderson watched on as Origin discard Akili Uate sealed back to back wins for the Knights for the first time since Wayne Bennett took the reins. Steve Kearney says the Eels lack polish with the footies. That was forward. And mistakes in defence didn't help. Back-to-back -back wins have given the Knights some confidence. They beat Parra at home 2012. The arrival of coaching director Chris Anderson has to help. These guys, you know, 45 years of football experience and um, seen the good and the bad. Clinton Fletcher, Nine News. After 17 rounds, the Rabbitohs are hanging on to a top eight spot. The Storm remain four points clear of the Bulldogs and Sharks. The Dragons and Raiders, they play tomorrow night. Eels consultant Chris Anderson was on board last night and Parramatta locked it up at six all after 40 minutes against the Knights. But three tries in a row, including one to an origin discard, was enough to secure Newcastle back-to-back -back wins, 20 to 12. You are Tay for the corner. So how did Coach Bennett turn it around? If I had the answer for you, I'd tell you, I don't know. Durosin, 7 News. He's dressed to kill tonight, Akili Uate, one of the real excitement machines in the competition. The two goal, out of the tackle taken by McQueen, got it to Uate! Yes, he's over! He's away, Uate! Uate goes in for another! It's Uate! 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 He is a human meteor. Taylor's up. You are you, you are they. Under the now, cast. sit back and enjoy. You are they. Chased by Luke. Has a dive. It's in vain. Four tries.
Edge equals the Newcastle record. Uante. Well, he did it in the final second of the game. Well, as they like to say in Newcastle, it was a Uate Parte. The last time the Knights played South Sydney, that was round 26, 2011. And that win sent Newcastle into the top eight. At this stage of 2012, Gary Bilch, can you realistically see Newcastle in the top eight? Oh, to be honest, no. But uh, they've, they've won the last couple and uh, they win today. We said just before, Matt, um, they'll be two points out of the top eight. So they could change my mind. They're up against a really good side. Uh, if they can beat South and beat them pretty well, I might be persuaded, but I can't see it happening. Yeah, well, let's ask the Newcastle captain about their number 10 earlier. I spoke to Danny Badiris. Danny, I've just been speaking about Willie Mason. Tell us about the role he's playing for the Knights at the moment. Yeah, Willie's playing a, a big role for us, obviously. Um, the size of him helps, but uh, the way we're using him, you know, he's using, using him in a powerful running sort of style. Uh, Wayne's doing a good job with him, and um, you know, his personality's pretty big, so uh, you know, we're appreciating that as well. Two in a row, do you feel like you've turned a corner? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, you know, there's some confidence there, but uh, you know, we just need to put our heads down and you know, who knows what will happen when we, when we come up and have a look. But, um, you know, we're working hard and it'll be no different today. We'll work hard and see what we come up with. And playing catch-up, it's important to keep this momentum, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. We're, um, like I said, we just want to play well each week. And, uh, you know, we, we've done that the last couple of weeks, but we're, we're looking to build on what we've been doing as well. How's the body of Dee Badiris holding up at this stage of the season? Yeah, it's obviously the home, home stretch a little bit, and uh, I'm fine. So, uh, yeah, the last few weeks I've, I've played a lot of minutes. So, um, yeah, looking forward to another tough battle out here today. Good luck. Thanks, mate. It's another veteran of the Newcastle lineup right there, Danny Bideris. Interesting to see today that South Sydney is warming up on the field, but Newcastle electing to stay in the sheds. Can you shed any light on that, Badge? No idea. <laughs> I've got no idea why. Sometimes you do, sometimes you I would have thought on a day like this you'd, uh, you'd come out. But even uh, at the very least, your outside backs, your kickers, your catchers, um, come out outside and get a bit of a feel for it. But look, the outside warm most, you know, 10 years ago never happened, so I suppose they're... They've just taken the option today, that's what they're going to do. Maybe it worked for them last start and uh, they want to keep it going. Newcastle player Tamana Tahu. Tamana, you would have come here excited today, thinking you're a chance, but they blew you away a bit at the start. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah they, we just made a lot of mistakes and um, they just capitalised on them. You know, they played percentage football, just up the ruck. You know, they got massive forwards and, um, you know, we got towel up today, yeah. What will Wayne say? What will you go home? Obviously next week you play Manly. That's a massive clash. How do you turn that around? Just claw our way back out again. Um, you know, we was in a five-week slump there for a while and we won two in a row. You know, we did come down here confident. We trained pretty well and, uh, you know, it's just, it just comes down to, to, to the game day. Uh, if you don't perform, then, you know, teams score points on us and, um, you know, we, we have got a tough week uh, against uh, Manly on Saturday, so we've got to pick ourselves up too early. It's going to be a short week for us, yeah. Go home and regroup, Tamana. All the best. Thanks, Lottie. Despite Tamana Tahu's efforts, it is glory, glory to South Sydney. Their 10th win of the season. We will break on NRL Sunday and come back to wrap it up. So ahead, slamming Sam Burgess, the Big Bunny hammers a night on debut during a brutal afternoon in Sydney. We start with NRL and South's handed Newcastle a 20 point beating this afternoon. Wayne Bennett blasted the referees after they let play continue despite a player being knocked out. League reporter Liam Cox has the story. Kylo Donnell on debut. Welcome to first grade. So Donnell again and runs into a shoulder. A debutante's nightmare busted up after a Burgess bell ringer. But everybody on the ground knew what the stadium was in. If that's not a reason to stop the game then and there, we'll never have a reason. Dave Taylor copped a rap over the knuckles for a one-fingered salute to the Blues. Today, he was using that right net to sink the sword into the Knights. Just watch this. Oh, it's a beautiful ball, actually. Slipped out the back. 22 points in as many minutes. The Bunnies winning seven of their last nine games. Straight onto the chest of Andrew Everingham. My senior blokes there, uh, I've got a good crew there. And, yeah, we're enjoying doing what we're doing at training. And the boys are showing that on the park. They're showing good confidence and enjoying playing with each other. So, it's a good place. 
After two wins on the trot, Newcastle thought they'd turn the corner. They'd better think again. South literally took the game out of their hands. Liam Cox, 10 News. Wayne Bennett was an upset coach today, not because his team lost, but because of an incident involving one of the Knights forwards. Wayne Bennett was fuming after Kyle O'Donnell was flattened by Sam Burgess and play was allowed to go on. Comes free. O'Donnell was bloodied and dazed. His coach wanted answers. You know, it was at, at, at us all the time about player welfare. Well, you know, we've all got to take a bit of responsibility for it. South won 34-14, but it wasn't the talking point. Everybody on the ground knew what the state he was in. That's not a reason to stop the game then and there. We'll never have a reason. Dave Taylor gave the Blues the finger on Wednesday. Today he treated the Knights with contempt. Here's Dave Taylor putting a skip on and an offload. Dylan Farrell, Dylan Farrell for the corner. South had Taylor-like skills all over the field. Looking for an outside player, straight onto the chest of Andrew Everingham. The Rabbitohs running rampant. Backing up in numbers, the wind set up in the first 25 minutes. It was like taking candy from a baby. Uate embarrassingly stripped by McQueen. It was nights out, 34-14. And runs into a shoulder from Sam Burgess. Juro Sen, 7 News. His soul hasn't been clear. Some nice pina coladas. I wouldn't get too excited about that. Some sections of the media. A warm bat of the football manager. Just like your missus. How is that? Is that better? <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> Willie, since, since when have you been able to pack with a loose arm? Put it over. Put it over. Did you hear that? Put the ball in. Can Brett Suttle back said, back Willie, when have you been able to game. pack with a loose arm? He said, I just got back from France, sir. There we go. I love that one from Willie Mason. Fantastic. Having a good year too, Willie. Fantastic. Really going. The one real shining light for Newcastle at the moment. Willie Mason says it would be a huge mistake for the Sea Eagles to use artificial turf instead of grass at Brookvale Oval. Wearing a council want to rip up the grass so more people can use Brookie. Mason injured an ankle playing for Australia on a synthetic surface in the US in 2004 and says it's dangerous. I'm not playing. No way. <laughs> I've got bad memories of playing on that. I was there for 12 months, so... While English club winners use it, the NRL says they have the final say. Give me that microphone. Give it here. Mine, Just mate. give it... Hey, 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 break that give it back. Hey, this is my job. Relax. I know it's rivalry around. You're going way too serious. So now I walk out of the crowd. I say hi to the crowd. G'day, crowd. How are we? <laughs> And now my favourite little part when I get ready to start the show and I go right like this. What, like this? Hey. Show starts now. <laughs> Carroll and Robbie O. Davis recall the classic 1997 grand final between the Sea Eagles and the Knights. Coming up, the 1997 grand final between the Knights and Sea Eagles was a classic. And next, two great rivals from that match, Robbie O. Davis and Mark <laughs> Carroll. They join us back with that afternoon. for the Novacastrians in 1997 when the Knights won their first ever premiership coming from behind to beat Manly and two of the stars of that game are with us tonight including Mark Spud Carroll from Manly. Good to see you Mark. And also with us the Clive Churchill medalist from the 97 grand final and with a great try scoring jig. Great fullback for the Knights in Queensland. Robbie Davis, Go Robbie. Now we can see that jersey you got on Robbie. That is actually your the jersey you wore in that grand final. This is the original, as you would have seen on the uh, replay then. It is uh, the exact same jersey. I found it moving house on the weekend, sitting in the back of the cupboard, had a bit of mould on it, chucked on the line, got it <laughs> nice and clean for the show. 
Um, but actually, I'm 10 kilos heavier since that grand final. And if uh, I couldn't follow it's it. It's all muscle, mate. Look at you. <laughs> and look at the size. So imagine how big it was back then. Yeah, I was, uh, I was a ball of muscle back then, too. <laughs> just, just before we get on to you, Spud, just take us back to that bus ride to the ground from Newcastle, how emotional it was with people lining the streets and, and what this day meant to the people of Newcastle. Well, I suppose it's easy for us to say um, that we played for a town, not just a team, and I think that's what got us over the line in the end. And uh, I don't want to say it too loud because I've got the biggest unit in the te of the team <laughs> sitting next to me, so I'll just try to condense it as much as I can. But, you know, just to have people lining in the streets and uh, cheering us out of town and, you know, you, you look beside and you've got players with tears in their eyes and it just was just more, more than a game. Um, and I think the day before, the underdog actually won the AFL grand final as well, if I can remember, uh, West Coast. And that just gave us all the energy and power we needed to get over the line. Now to you, Spud. Mm. Your wars with uh, Chief Harrigan are legendary. We don't see that much in the game anymore. Were you the type of bloke that just used to look at the calendar and go, Newcastle Knights, round 16. It's going to be on. 100%. Um, Is it? Yeah, I was wondering where the role really starts with the Chief, but... Then coming through, uh, you know, with, I started at Penrith and I went to the South, but when I got to Manly, it started to fire up a bit. So, and also having a coach like Bob Fulton, maybe he just dangles the carrot all the time, saying Chief is always going to give it to me, so I had to prove him wrong. But um, looking at those photos, mate, I'm getting hit by three and four blokes. That wasn't what I liked at Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> no, another bloke who got hit in the grand final by way of a boot yeah. is Mad Dog McDougall hits Tuvi in the melon. Now, did you guys square up? Because this is how rivalries begin, really. It's not so much the result of games, but it's the events in games. Did you square up with him? No, I haven't had my hands on him yet, but he, um, <laughs> he keeps showing his, how big his thighs are, so I'm a bit worried about him. <laughs> hey, Robbie, we, I always talk about turning points in, in games, and especially grand finals. Now, you're sitting at the back in, at full back there for the Newcastle Knights. You've got a perfect view of it. Joey Johns goes up the blind side. We're doing the commentary of the game. We're all going, what's he doing? And all of a sudden, he puts Darren Albert in. Yeah, I suppose he was working to his right foot, so he's going to try to get a field goal in there at one stage. No, I'm just joking about that. He was 20 metres out from the line. Um, if, if that, and I think he seen an opportunity on the blind and I don't think at any time he was actually going to pass it to Darren and he just ran out of options and then at the last minute he popped it out the back and the quickest guy in the world just happened to be there. Robbie, so while we're on him now, right and he's got there. the ball right now, yeah, are we looking at just there, is he the next immortal in your opinion? Oh, mate, it's funny because I got asked that question just the other day and I didn't have an answer to it, so I can't give another answer. I, I'm happy with the ones they got at the moment. Spud. <laughs> That game, and that always, that was the first game, grand final I ever called. It was an amazing game of footy. When did you think, did you think it was slipping away before that moment? No, we're leading 16 8. You don't lose games from 16 8. I think, um, I know it just proves in the rugby league that it goes for 80 minutes. You know, Joey down the blind side, a bit slow at dummy half, and next thing, bang, they've turned it out, but he scored. Um, I've never seen the game since then. I've seen some highlights that you keep showing, which is killing me. <laughs> 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 but I've never seen the game, mate. I just think, um, you look back in your career, and I'm fortunate enough I've played in three grand finals. Uh, we won one in 96, but it would have been nice to get a double up in 97, but that's what happens. Now, last week we had George Rose on the show, current Manly yeah. Crop, and Blocky, you're trying to convince him for a try scoring celebration to pretty much eat the football. <laughs> yeah, eat, eat half the ball. Now, you, you had a great <laughs> try scoring celebration yourself, Robbie. Let's have a look. You scored a couple in that grand final. Yeah. Here's the first one. Bit of a jig. Mate, he can dance his bike. Yeah. Yeah. He can dance. What I want to know is. Is this the second one here for... Right, there you go. I've been no dancing with him. He sat on my head, this fella. How can I dance with him sitting on my head? <laughs> Have you still got a jig in you? <laughs> oh, yeah, a couple late nights at the discos these days. Uh, but not too much. Come really. on, give us one. Give us one. Give us one. Here we are. What camera are we looking at here? Yeah, there you go. It actually come from... Yes. Come from, um... Movie Last Boy Scout. Oh, mate's towel up everyone in the end of the movie. He's done yeah. the Jigger Joy up on this, this thing. I mean, if I ever score a try in, in the semi final, first of all, I've done the semi, uh, I'll do that Jigger Joy because I was pretty happy about this situation. But the lead up to that try was um, Terry Hill got injured. He scored a try a couple of weeks earlier and hurt his ribs. And I went to bed dreaming the night before a game that if I get a chance on his left hand side, I'll dummy and go. And I sort of laughed. As it happened, I, I was laughing to the line because I couldn't believe that. I actually dreamt the night before that he had that injury. And I, if I'd done that through. side, I'd get it. Yeah, yeah so mm. was, that's why I had a bit of a laugh and I wrapped the arm there at the end just for stupidity, I think. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst you're impersonating yourself, you also took on Hopawade. What were you thinking yeah. in the game there? How'd you come up with that? I suppose this is where the rivalry comes into it. I, I rang a good man today and probably the person that knows more about the rivalry um, than anyone is Sam Stewart. I said, mate, tell me about this rivalry. Where did it all come from? I thought it was 
um, you know, more of a Polynesian thing. You know, you had the, the Manly and Newcastle had a lot of Polynesians in their sides and that's where they come into the comp. But it was actually, they come up to play a challenge match, Manly come up to play a challenge match game in 1980, just, uh, 1988, just after they won the grand final in 87. And um, Newcastle knocked them over with a team of reserve graders um, just after they won the grand final in that first game. And that's where it, I think the man, he said Manly got a bit cranky about that and the rivalry started right there. And these two fellas, Chief and uh, Spud, they backed it up with knocking each other out every game right through till <laughs> the current day, yeah. It was a sensational rivalry, that one in particular. <laughs> but all Newcastle Manly games in that era, and hopefully there's another good one coming up uh, on Saturday night as well. Mark Carroll, Robbie O'Davis, Davis, great Thanks. to see you, boys. Hey, great to see you, boys. <laughs> was a heck of a game, the 97 Grand Final. Still to come, more revelations from the mole in the late mail. And coming up, Blocky catches up with Eels legend Michael Cronin. Back in a moment. It's a busy night of rugby league games at halftime. The Cowboys are just ahead of the storm, 6-4, while in Newcastle the Knights are leading the Sea Eagles 10-0 at the break. Flying Newcastle winger Akila Uate benefited from some lucky touches to find the line first against the Premiers. Last play perhaps. Boyd flicks it out the back, over the sideline. And that is it here in Newcastle. A big win for the home side. The Knights have done it. They're still alive. Six tries to one. 32 points to six over the Eagles. A dominant performance from the home side who scored first, scored early and kept grinding. And I think the staunchest Newcastle supporters would have expected a scoreline like this after Manly's effort last week. The Knights, they have a, some belief now in their, in their defensive system. Well, they've got plenty of good attacking players out there as well. The scoreline tells us that. Very happy Jared Mullen, but all the Knights are happy. We're about to find out just how happy as we go onto the field with Adam. I'm joined by Willie Mason, mate. How good was that? Yeah, it was. It was I spoke about all week with, um, you know, with the rivalry and... You know, the, the hatred between Manly and Newcastle and everybody had to buy into it and I think we did tonight and you know, it was just a great team effort and it was great to show some resilience on our line and to come back from a defeat like last week against South to come against, you know, Premiership contenders Manly and beat them here was a great effort. And mate, you must be ecstatic with your own form. Oh mate, it's a team effort mate, you know, when everything clicks, my form goes alright but I'd rather, I'd rather win any day than go good. And mate, what does the future hold for Willie Mason? Are you hoping to re-sign with the Knights in the next couple of days? Yeah, I hope so. You know, I'd love to finish my career here. It'd be, um, it'd be wonderful. But you know, if we keep putting in performances like that, all that kind of stuff takes care of itself, Mad Dog. And, mate, next week, a big game as well. Uh, what do you have to do to repeat that sort of performance during the week? Yeah, we've got the Warriors over there, mate. We've got to, um, you know, we fly over there on Thursday. It'll be a big week for us. Another physical team, and they're hard to beat over there on Saturday. But you know, if, to make a run to the finals, we've got to win, there over, we've got to win over there. So it's a must win. Congratulations, really Great game, mate. Cheers. Thanks, mate, dog. Cheers, mate. The Newcastle Knights 32 have defeated Manly 6. This has been a production of Fox Sports in partnership with the National Rugby League. OK, we'll take our first Firmly break sure. and come back and have a look at uh, a continuation of what's been a tremendous rivalry round. <laughs> With their finals hopes fading and in desperate need of competition points, the Knights had a tough assignment taking on a Seagull side with seven wins from their last nine. But back-to-back -back penalties put Newcastle in position, Darius Boyd and Dane Gagai opening the door for their wing. Open space and still going, Daly Cherry Evans tried to spark his side, kicking a 40-20 before breaking the line. And some open space, Cherry Evans goes straight through the middle, inside and outside finds Harrison. Uate crossed again but was denied. Looking for a second. Just check Branding, please, mate, in the sideline also. No try it is. Tyrone Roberts then dummying and stepping to give his side a 10 0 lead at the break. Tyrone Roberts steps straight on through. 
things didn't improve for the Premiers as James McManus somersaulted over the line before a deft kick from Jared Mullen blew the lead to 22. And Mullen's right boot finds Dane Gagai. Manly captain Jamie Lyon tried to bring his side back into the match. Lyon looking to open them up and Jamie Lyon flicks it off to Brent Kite who slides over. But there was no stopping the Knights, saving their best for last to celebrate coach Wayne Bennett's 650th NRL match. Steps, steps again and scores. You are tied at his finest. Yeah, six weeks ago, coach Wayne Bennett seemed nonplussed by the performances of his Newcastle Knights. Well, three wins from their last four. This, their best performance to him. They gave the Tigers 14 start and ran them down comfortably, but 32 points to six against the reigning Premiers, and, and they did it on their merits. Defensively, they were outstanding. Uh, with the football, looked very, very dangerous. On a night, Joey, where I think, in many ways, the number seven came of age, yep. Tyrone Roberts. Uh, Jared Mullen was tremendous. But... Jared Mullen had total control mm. over the game. Tyrone Roberts' was running game, had him at sixes and sevens. Uh, it's a beautiful try here by Tyrone. Uh, his goal kicking was sensational, but Jared Mullen so mature in his performance and his kicking game. His kicking and game his battle with, with Kieran Foran, he really took Kieran Foran on. Uh, it was a great to see. What about Manly? They, I know that they, went, they went in without the Stewart brothers, and that's a big blow. They lost Steve Maddai through the flu you know, I, I as well. Think, I don't think they played that bad. You know, the scoreline doesn't paint a pretty picture, but... Their defence are nights early on. They had a lot of opportunities, Manly. Then you take the Stuart boys out of their attack. That's pretty. They, they had 44 tackles inside Newcastle's 20 yeah. metre yeah. line. Sometimes you've got to reward the other team. I think when you lose, like you lose both Stuart boys, that's a big part of their it's, attack, isn't yeah. it? And Matt Oi. You know, he's yeah. one who they throw to and, and there is excuse something. that a, a lot of the players had the flu, I understand, looting that. And also, looking forward, they've got the Bulldogs this Friday. You know, a lot of them will be looking forward to that game. I've got to say, they, they weren't that bad. I'll, all, all, you know, all the, the credit goes to the Knights. Yeah. After the disappointment of um, being basically dropped from the origin side, Aquila Uate, uh, tremendous last night. Got out of the line three times for two tries. And the lead up to the, the first tries, that's one, look at that, Darius Boyd. He can't score. That, that, that. Have a look at the plays. He beats Kieran Four in there, beats Tony, Tony Williams. Williams. It's just a, mm -hmm. he's a freak. What about this young Gagai? Um, Sam, uh, up at the Broncos, he left there, I guess, for disciplinary reasons is the best way to say. Always had ability, and you're looking for key purchases through the course of the season. We've seen plenty of clubs come up with them. He looks like he's been a real find for Newcastle. Yeah, he was a, he was a great player. Um, you know, he was on the cusp of playing for us up there in the Broncos. A, a few people, you know, got the jump on him just because of, you know, off-field incidents where, you know, he, he kept on showing up late for training and, and it just seemed like his commitment wasn't there for the team. So I think it was a bit of a kick in the butt for him to go to Newcastle and now he's playing some really good football. So he's a great buy for Newcastle and he'll do great things there. He's a nice kid too. We when I was coaching the Roosters, we tried to sign him down there and sat there with him and his, his father used to play for the Broncos. Yeah. And made a great kid. Yeah. Really nice kid. So when I heard about the discipline, he sort of related it back to not getting the, someone, a few getting the jump on him at the team and obviously he's just gone away, bit of the sulks or something and um, obviously he didn't take much to turn around because he's playing outstanding. Mm. Just on Aquila, he scored 62 tries so far in, in 82 games. He sort of play, hopefully he'll play for one, for the Knights his whole career. He could play for another 10 years, he could he could well score 200 tries if he stays injury free. I hope because so. Because the, the rate he goes at, you'd think if he stays injury free, he'd be scoring around 20 tries a year. Well, he's got that rare combination. He's got blinding speed, but he's built like a back rower. You know, we've had the Terry Fays and Harry Grace, <laughs> but the thing about him, he doesn't miss games either. When, when he comes out of his cut, when he steps and he moves, he actually gets quicker when he steps. It's it's frightening. Okay, you, you get to tackle him, how is it? He's probably one of the hardest to tackle, and it's, you know, it's more and more wingers these days are, are becoming the, the bigger players on the field. But, you know, a coup, like you said, he's, he's built like a back row, and he, and he you know, runs like bloody Carl Lewis. Well, he throws that rump into you. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, no he's, got a, he's got a big diff behind him, yeah. <laughs> Be careful, we won't go there, mate.